Good morning, everybody. Um, we're here for our budget work session, uh, May 24th at 8 o'clock. We're going to uh, basically turn the meeting and have Lance go through everything. If you have questions, go and ask them. I'm not going to worry so much about recognizing each uh, commissioner unless uh, things get out of hand. <laughs> but otherwise, thank you everyone for being here. And Mr. Manager, the floor is yours. Sure, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go through the budget message. You need to approve the thank you for you. Well, we do. You're right. It helped if I read my stuff. <laughs> no, that was me. That was mine. Gentlemen, we do have an agenda in front of us. Do we have a motion to approve it? So Is there a second? Second. Very good. All in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Uh, All right, Mr. Chair, I'm going to go through uh, tabs 1 through 10 fairly uh, quickly. The budget message basically is a summary of, of the budget. At 11 through the rest are probably where we go through each department. You all ask questions or make comments or suggestions or recommendations. Again, this is my budget that I prepared for you all. Once I discuss this budget, it becomes your budget, and you guys can deliberate and, and make any suggestions or recommendations to modify the budget however you see. Let's go to tab one. Um, I'm going to go through it kind of page by page and just highlight the, the uh, main areas. The overall budget, including the general fund, the enterprise fund, and other funds, is approximately $147 million. The general fund itself is $99 million. The vision, mission statement, strategic focus areas, those are the uh, uh, areas you all approved during the strategic work session that drove our budget process and our thought process. From the very bottom down there, the initial budget request started our process with $15.7 million deficit. The project is primarily due to a $7.5 million increase from the school capital outlay, a $1.6 million increase in health insurance, $1.2 million increase in social services, and that was from two different areas of loss of revenue from the 4E foster care funds and four additional staff persons. And then finally, $4 million in capital outlay from engineering and utilities. Page two, we are recommending to maintain the tax rate of 69.5 cents. As you can see from the chart here in the middle, compared to our peers of population, we have seen an increase in all, all of our sections of the Avalon, the real property, personal property, public utilities, and motor vehicles. In all of the Avalon, we saw a net gain of $1.6 million, and our tax rate increased from 98.1 cents to 98.4 cents. Percent, excuse me. Um, and again, stop me if you have any questions or comments during this process we can about these discussions. On page three, this budget recommends a dedicated five and a half cents to capital reserve or debt service fund, which will be elaborated later on in our discussions today. The value of the penny went up from $752,993 to $775,693. We are projecting a 24% or $2.3 million increase in sales tax. The pandemic helped us here as more of our residents stayed local and online shopping has been a point of everyday life here as we've come to know that. Um, not to mention that we budgeted very conservatively with the unknown impact of the pandemic this year. So a combination of the two led to such an increase in our sales times. Page four, other key revenue changes. Wanted to bring your attention, the election fees increased due to municipal elections, which will have offsetting expenditures. The EMS fees decreased for two reasons. Uh, the collection rate dropped from 58% to 53% due to the pandemic. And the number of tree to no transport increase, which is basically we're out there, we go out there to treat patients, but we do not transport for them due to the hospital protocols. I have a question. Um, the collection rate for EMS, uh, are we renegotiating or looking at other options? We have not. We've used the same company for forever and a day. Um, they pretty low, right? Running 58%? It's been higher. Uh, the, the pandemic has hurt very badly, but it's been huge. Which they projected was one of the highest in the state, um, but it's the pandemic is still rough. Okay, thank you. And the 70s is a year end, right, Rodney? The 70% is at year end. Again, okay, after everything's done. Correct. Yeah, so this is still going to be lower than that because they just sent out bills and that's getting counted in the collection. It's not done yet. Yeah. 
Okay, building inspection fees, we anticipate to increase based on uh, the past growth of single family dwelling and projected developments in our southwestern corner of the county. We're projecting a decrease from the KB Reynolds grant. This will be the last year of the funding for the integrated health program. So we'll be, need to be thinking about what to do with that program next year. We need to keep it. If we want to fund that program, it seems like it's a very uh, strong program, but we need to pull together the, um, uh, the performance measures on those. So, so your paragraph here says the county has designated funds to cover the cost for another year. That's from the, we have we got a grant, KB Reynolds grant, and so those funds are going to be um, reduced to nothing this year. But we have one more year of funds, KB Reynolds grants to fund that pro that program. And then next year, we'll have to figure out what we want to, the county wants to pick up the tab on uh, continuing that program. Is that something that could be partly funded by our MOE money? He said, could part of that money be, could part of that be funded by the MOE funds? <clears throat> um, environmental health fees are anticipated to increase again, same as building inspections due to the growth uh, in the county. <clears throat> Page five, the county will be losing around $760,000 due to the state not, not funding the 4E foster care program. And we're working with Cardinal right now to make up some of this funding through the subcapitation agreement, which we're anticipating to get a million dollars this year and $800,000 next year. Uh, projecting a decrease in interest earned, which is pretty self explanatory. I'm recommending appropriating $3.5 million of the fund balance to the general fund, and that will consist of $2.5 million in the normal plug that we do every year. $145,493 in anticipated unearned Duke Energy Incentive, $50,644 from the public health escrow, and that's for a vehicle and some part-time demo assistance. Again, $308,706 from the KP Rhythms Grant for the Integrated Health Program, $500,000 in CARES Act to cover the COVID-19 claims that we have this year, and $20,000 in federal forfeiture and other strict restricted funds for miscellaneous purchases throughout the year so we don't have to come back to you all every time for small purchases for, from the uh, federal forfeiture funds. And then last on this page of, of interest will be the recommended increase uh, landfill tipping fee of a dollar per ton. This was recommended by our consultant Ray after evaluating the life of site on landfill. Uh, no questions, page six. And again, this is just an a overview. Once we get to, to have 11 on, is we will have, I would assume, the uh, deep discussions department by department or line, on, line on by line on, however you want to do it. But page six is personnel. In the overall picture, we reduced staff by 0.7 positions. The recommended budget includes 6.3 new positions and eliminates 6.99 positions. There is one position for community social service technician to transport children in our custody to appointments, school visits, family visitations, counseling and placements. One environmental health specialist due to the increase in development, and that's water and septic permits, basically. Four detention officers, which I would, would be, excuse me, one officer per night shift and two transition officers. Currently they have 10 officers on days and nine officers on nights. We got a question on that. All right. Well, why, why are you trying to make it even? You have less activity at night than you do day. I'd work with the sheriff's office and the sheriff's report. I'm very interested in the field administration. Yes, the night shift. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Explain the checks. Uh, we do uh, right now. We're doing quarterly, so we do every 15 minutes. Um, by the state standards, we have to do two uh, rounds every hour uh, at intermediate times. They can't be. They got to be less than uh, 40 minutes. They document. Yes. Yeah, they write yeah. it down. Yeah, we have to check yes. every inmate so many times an hour, and then if the person's on a special watch, we have to do at least four times. And part of our and this also falls into play with part of our suicide reduction prevention program here because, uh, as you know, we've had some issues that we're trying to curtail. Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, in existing positions, we have uh, eliminated one part-time position in legal and create one full-time position. This is a savings of $66,000. Youth services eliminate three positions and spread the workload and reclassify a position to administrative assistant three. Uh, how much of a savings? Almost flat. Okay, I'm sorry. Almost, instead of 66,000, it's 66 dollars. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a huge difference there. Um, youth services eliminate three positions and spread the workload and reclassify a position to administrative assistant three. Saving $49,000, social service, reclassify position to child support agent one, so they can present cases in court and reclassify position to accounting technician to reflect the duties that they are currently doing. On page seven, <coughs> positions that we are proposing to eliminate is the inmate litter program officers. These positions are recommended to be eliminated. Uh, recommending eliminating, again, one paralegal position and making the other full time. In youth services, reiterating that to eliminate three positions and reassign duties to other staff members, they're also starting to bill for services. And water and sewer eliminate two positions as we're contracting out these services to, with Envi EnviroLink, and it seems to be going very well with the contracting out of those services. And then, as you see at the bottom, there were 11 positions that were not recommended by staff. Okay, I just want to know uh, about telecommunication positions. What, what, why why y'all chose not to? We just we we didn't feel like it was necessary at the time. I thought we had a lot of turnover. <clears throat> they do, but we have a lot of part time to be able to fill in. On the bottom of page seven, going over to page eight, our this budget recommends a three percent merit increase for eligible employees. And on page eight, the proposal is a tiered approach to encourage high performance. An overall score of 3.25 or lower would not receive an increase at all. An over, uh, overall score of 3.25 to 3.499 uh, would be a, see a one-time bonus, not tied to the base pay. And then a 3.5 or higher would have a 3% raise added to their base pay. The cost of that would be $455,000 to the county. So it's basically pass-fail. What? So it's basically pass-fail. Um, pass, fail, and then in the middle. So, what's the measuring tool? We have a performance evaluation that we do with through NeoGov, and we we uh, measure staff from zero to five, and it's based on a criteria of their um, a, a different criteria. And has there been any training sessions for department heads or folks in management type positions within a department on how to uh, measure? No. Is there going to be? I mean, because you got some folks that naturally won't give a five or some I agree. won't give a one. I agree. And so, I mean, if you end up with, with those scenarios, uh, one, you'll have some departments that grade completely different and you've got a pass fail system for the most part which to me merit based is merit based and you don't have everybody getting the same thing at basically 60 something percent um, if somebody grades an 80 they ought to get higher than somebody that grades a 60 that's that's correct and that's a but, very valid point the last time that we did this we had uh uh, leadership that graded and they didn't get above the, the I think it was a three point what was it? Three point two five. So they came back to us and said, Well can we regrade it? We're like, no, you regraded it right the first time. But it certainly would uh, be very valid to have a training session for that if you guys pass that. Well I think my point and I believe it's in support of uh, Commissioner Berger uh, 
do the best you can. I don't believe it's going to be foolproof to remove the subjective nature uh, of this thing. No, I agree. It won't be foolproof, but if there's there's not been any guidance to staff, then there's... That's why whatever you can do to remove that subjective I'm, nature. How much or something like that cost you? It won't. I mean, I'm Champagne doesn't cost anything. It's just a matter of... No, it's this easy. is... This is a matter of what is it that HR and management have recommended for folks to be graded on? This isn't paying somebody to come in. I mean, this is a program that we've asked them to, to kind of shift to. They're telling us that they've got it shifted to that, but it doesn't sound like there's been any real meat put into it. So you would hope if you have people in leadership roles like that, that they would be able to grade and be very fair. Because when I grade, I can tell you that all the ones that I grade, they don't give high scores. I don't give fives. I barely give fours. So and well, but is that because we don't have? I hope it's not because we don't have the right people in the right places. It's it's the way people grade. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, you might grade a. a, a no higher than a 3.25, but I understand your point, and I'll make sure that we have training on that. And I guess we need a copy of that as well, because we grade three folks, and they need to be graded the same way, and I'm being told that none of them, based on the way management is set up and the way management grades, that we shouldn't be giving fives to anybody. That's that's and, that's in the eye of the beholder. But wait, I mean, so, you know, if, if you if you think that I do a five, hey, give me a five. <laughs> if you think I do a two, give me a, that's that's on each individual how they grade. Sure. Yeah, each individual interaction. Sure. Those, those definitions are there when you get to Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Lance, I do agree that uh, I do like the fact that you have performance objectives in place to give some guidance. However, uh, I think Commissioner Berger and I talked about this, and I think I talked with a little bit about with uh, uh, Commissioner Richardson. It is going to be hard to remove the subjectiveness from it. it it's, it's just going to be it's going to be difficult to do. I think that uh, when I was looking at it, one, this is three percent merit raise for eligible performance uh, uh, for employees on the anniversary day. Is this just for full time employees? Permanent, it's for all permanent employees and actually the new personnel policy, we're trying to get rid of that permanent employee. Like your uh, your library assistants work 29 and a half hour weeks. So anybody who works over 20 hours a week, it's counted as an FTE it's for them. And it's merit. So if it was a COLA, it would affect your part time people because your part time people are based off of, I believe it's the bottom range of whatever the job is and then with the hourly rate, whereas this is based on merit. Well, uh yeah, and I've been one of those who received those evaluations that come up the line and had leadership positions to evaluate their subordinates and, and, and seen, witness firsthand the, the difference in the evaluation process uh, during a, a, a situation like we talked about. Uh, and I do like the fact that at first I was kind of iffy about the way you, the one time 3.5, uh, the one, one time bump versus a a raise, a bonus situation raise. But I do think it's important that our employees have a pathway to midpoint and a pathway to the top end of their pay scale. The fact of the matter is they should not retire here for 30 years and do an outstanding job and never reach midpoint. And right there, right now, there's no conduit to, to getting there. And and so I, I so after thinking about this a little bit more, I said, you know, I, I do kind of like the fact that it's a raise instead of a just a, a, a one-time bonus. However, I think I think Commissioner Berger brings up an excellent point when he talks about the person that does uh, the employee that that's, that averages a 4.2 uh, and the employee that averages a 3.7. They shouldn't necessarily get the same raise based on their performance over the past year. It should be a pass fail. It should be a, you know, in my mind's eye. And what I've done in the past is, you know, an employee may get a 3% raise, and I just thought these numbers out there, a 4% raise or a 5% raise based on their performance. But I do like the part about, uh, you know, the, 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 the bonus. I, I don't just, you know, I, I think that's a pretty good idea. My biggest thing, as long as there's a, a pathway 
for an employee who, who excels and does a good job to, to get to uh, his midpoint within a, uh, an appropriate amount of time. And he stays there long enough to stay for the job function. Prime when he retired. Example, prime example was uh, Mr. Joyner, who just retired 30 years, never meet, never got high. He was in the midpoint the whole time, right? Well, but anyway. The, uh, the 3% now should help people to get to midpoint because it isn't added to base that we've been doing the last three or four years, but it's not tiered, point taken, it's not tiered, you can't grow faster uh, than others. Kevin brings a good point up, so make me clear something out. And it's, I just, that was my question too, was the scale. Now, where, where, did, where did we fall on the scale? And I take it that there's employees that fall below uh, what's expected, that there's counseling and an action plan in order to get them in that direction. But yeah, thank you. That's all, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Um, also in here is for the, the employee pay is the one-third study this year. Well, I'm sorry. Can we, so I guess, are you going to get us something? Or are you going to... I guess have some sort of session with department heads and whoever else does the I will assure you that we'll have a training session with uh, those that are providing performance evaluations to make sure they understand how to do it and what our expectations are. Okay. Okay. Are we going to try to do something where we break out the, um, instead of a, a pass fail, I think that was the example right. we used, that we use somewhere, uh, Three a bonus, four pay raise, you know, three point five a pay increase of this, a four pay increase of this, a four point five and a five. You know, just break it out so it's not just the past. A little bit more to you. Yeah, right. yeah, Absolutely. yeah. I, I personally would like to see uh, that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Superstars a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to reward folks that are going out there giving their all every day. Are y'all comfortable with the bonus being the first? The idea of the bonus at least being the first year is that, yeah, you did pretty good work this year, but it wasn't as good as it could be, so you can get it this year, but you don't get it out to your base pay. If you want to move through the ranks, you need to do good consistently. Uh, I'm comfortable with that. I, I'm not crazy about them uh, scoring just a bonus level and getting the same as the top end employee as far as a map. Sure. Now, granted, that person at the top end, you, you would think that they would continue at that level over time and continue to advance with a pay raise, but I think the bonus should be less than. We can build that into the tiers, absolutely. Yeah. Why are you still talking about Mr. Mr. Chair, my suggestion would be considering the complexity of the problem and all the points that I've heard being valid is that we ask the manager and his able bodied assistant to come back with a plan that addresses those comprehensively. Uh, and the best you can, his suggestions for removing as much su uh, subjectivity before they design a training program to get people uh, to square away. Okay, and for my thing is that you bring up merit, uh, you know, we want to include elected officials on this merit registration so they don't get that evaluation. Good point. What have you done in the past? We've had the elected officials part of the um, process, and I was asked that uh, basically, well, I was told that basically that, that we didn't have to rate them, that they answered the public, so they got their performance value, but they got the 3% in the past. So that's part of the same question, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so you. Oh, you you bring this to bring bring you bring us something. Yeah, I'm not sure if was saying if we're if we're to, to bring this to a public hearing on June fourth. So if you don't mind, if I could email you guys and you guys can provide me feedback. When we're talking about elected officials, just for clarity's sake, we're talking about the sheriff and the registered seats. That's right. I'll make sure we're not Michigan talking about this no, body. No, I'll make sure everybody to, understands we're not talking about this guy. Yeah, right. we don't get that. No. And we can structure this within the money that's already in there. So that makes it a little bit, you know, you're not changing dollars and everything, you're just changing the structure. Okay. All right, good. Move on. Okay, the, the next item is the one third study. You all had approved this past year, one third study that uh, was conducted by the Piedmont Triad Regional Council. 
uh, and then we'll have a rec recommendation to you all in late June or early July. The reason is from the pandemic, they just have to have a chance to get with staff. They have provided one proposal already, which we're still going through right now. Uh, we're recommending to, to continue that one third study and uh, recommending $400,000 we put in there this upcoming year for that. Again, th these numbers are just dollars. We don't know when it comes back if it's going to be 300000 or 450000 We just we don't know. So we are asking you all to consider that. The health insurance is a, a big concern. We have seen a significant increase in cost claimants, which has caused our cost to go up by 35%. And I've got Pat and Thank you. I've got Pat here to talk about the, or briefly mention the health insurance. We've discussed that because it is a big concern of ours. We, if you see on the next page, we recommended increases for spousal, children, and family coverage. We evaluate our peers' counties, and we remain lower than what they fund. So we're going to make additional recommendations every year on slowly increasing the contribution for the employee, for the spouse, children, and family. And we also recommend using a million dollars in the health insurance fund balance to balance the fund for this year. You're talking about rates charged to the employees? Yeah. Well, right now, right now, the employees are paying a certain amount for spouses, a certain amount for the children coverage, coverage and family coverage, and we're recommending increasing their contribution to the county. I don't, I don't understand. I, you just said that the Rockingham County's benefit package is piss poor compared to everybody else. So now you're going to make it worse by increasing the rate for them? I won't say that, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I said that. I mean, I know it is. It's terrible. The benefit package for Rockingham County employees is terrible. Eden and Reese will outdo us every year. The, the surrounding counties are even better than ours. But now you want to increase the rate on the employees because of our yes. bad policies? No, it's the, the, the contribution that they make, they pay. So we're paying for their spouses, the children, their dependents, and family. And so ours compared to our peer counties, our contrib our, their contribution to theirs is a lot lower, so we're trying to bring ours up in comparison to where they are. So for individuals, it's still free. Just an employee only. The employee doesn't have to pay anything. It's the rate that if you have your spouse, you have children, you have family covered. Uh, we're having to go up on ourselves 20% this year for... Uh, so we're having to have them go up. Yeah, I mean, so we're, having, we're making having them go up to at minimum keep up with the pace of what we're doing. Now, I understand that. I understand what you're saying, but... You know and I know our benefits for our county employees is terrible. We don't offer a lot of these other places offer. That's what I'm saying. You know that. It says it right here. But we're going to keep increasing uh, the only benefit that we really give to county employees? Well, let me try to understand what you said in relation to what Commissioner Travis said. I yeah. believe you said that our employees are paying less than our peer counties. Quite a bit less Quite than. Mr. Travis is saying that we're worse than the peer counties. Yeah. Benefit. Those things Benefits. Are, okay. All right. Benefit wise. So he's only talking about health insurance. You're talking about more than health insurance. Yeah. Now it's I'm just talking about health insurance right now. Yeah. Just, if just you look health at insurance. health insurance, Kevin, and you look at the total benefit package that a county employee gets, medical is about their only benefit they get. All these other counties offer 401k. They got all kinds. We got longevity. That's it. What else do the other counties have? Lance? What are our peer counties? You're comparing us to peer counties to. <sighs> You got the list, Burke County. Yeah, uh, pull it up. We look at population, we look at property tax base, we look at a few other things just to try to get as close as we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Burke County is one, Henderson mm -hmm. County is one, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Harnett County is one, one. Caldwell County is one. Do we have any That's idea the what their benefit package is? We pulled that several so years ago, but I can pull it again. I don't know. Off the top of my head. Mr. Chair, I suggest at this point we're looking at the health insurance aspect only and uh, responding to the suggestions of the manager of whatever additional benefits that we choose to lay on in the future. So the health insurance is a problem. Hopefully this, hopefully this year was an anomaly year. Don't know it, but we had around 15 high claimants that had really caused this to go up drastically. Um, 
I don't know. If you look at just your people going to the doctor, you know, regular stuff, that part didn't go up that much. It's your um, high cost claimants. They're the ones that, that are very expensive. Well, people I want have you to serious understand what's conditions. going on. You're offering an employee 3% a merit base pay raise increase. You're going up over 3% of probably their salary. In some instances, yeah. yeah. So they're losing. The ones that have additional coverages, yeah. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? You're losing. So are you pro employee or you're not pro employee? Absolutely. That's pro what employee. this board needs to decide. Are you pro employee or are you against the employee? Because their increase of insurance is more than their merit rate. We can't control that. So, an example, an example. And this is so say we pay $10,000 per employee for their health insurance. We only charge $2,000 for a spouse. Where there's an $8,000 differential, which is way lower. We need to be closer to the $10,000 instead of $2,000. And the spouses drop costs just like employees do. So that's why we're trying to bring this up, not all at one time, but eventually so it matches. And all counties subsidize, don't get me wrong, all of them do, but not to the extent that we are. We need to change that. that. Well, but, all right, so Commissioner Travis, what other benefits are you trying to throw on the table? And if we have a balanced budget, where are you pulling the money from? I'm not trying to throw any more benefits on the table. I wish there were more benefits offered to the county employees. I'm just saying we shouldn't keep hurting them. I mean, this is why we lose people. Y'all keep hitting the benefits, we're gonna keep losing people. This is why people go to Greensboro. This is why people go to other counties. But y'all keep adding to medical, especially for working families, and you're gonna see more people leave. I'm just, that's just my, because that's the only benefit the county offers. Okay, but that expense, where are you pulling it from? You got a, you got a capital reserve. You got it's very healthy. We we've done a great job over the last five to six years. But you've got a recurring expense and a capital reserve. You got an option to raise taxes. Money. You got an option. Well, the only concern I have is is uh, you, you understand what I'm saying. I understand what you're saying. But the fact of the matter is, you can't pay the electric bill on your savings account pretty soon. That's that, you're going the wrong direction. That's why you control the budget. But the, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, as we all know, health care is so upside down now. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Look, look, and we I can't can. predict it. And yes, there is going to be some costs associated with it. my health care costs more than it did. My wife's costs more than it did. She has to buy up with the state now. And we do have, I know there's some things that we've had to take, some actions we've had to take as a board because of the uncertainty of health care. This board right here ended health care for new hires when they retire. Why do we do, do we make a decision? Is that decision going to impact us? No. Is it going to impact our kids down the road when they sit here trying to make these decisions on what to do? Yes. That's a 30 year return on that decision. Do I want to go up on health care? No. But is there is there a viable option for a long-term solution? I don't know. I mean, the fact of the matter is, the manager sitting here and the, and the assistant manager sitting there telling me that in Human Resources has looked at this issue, looked at surrounding counties. Maybe there's another benefit that we can provide that we don't provide by the savings we realize on this. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, it's still going to it costs more to do business in healthcare today than it did 10 years ago. And that's just, just it. That's my opinion, Mr. Chair. Do I, do I hate to do it? Yeah, but the, you know, I have, uh, I carry insurance on, on my family, and it costs me money, and it's cost me more money over the course of my career to keep them on it. I think we need to be sure to also remember, we're, we're doing that third study, which is one third of the employees, and we're doing this over three years. So everyone gets looked at, salaries get reevaluated. We're talking about developing this training program um, to better rate our employees' performance to where the employees who are doing very well can get rewarded better and their salaries would be increased. Um, so, so, yes, you've got the good along with that, that bad in the insurance uh, co-pays. 
Can we see the document of the uh, like size counties that and what they charge their insurance and what we yeah. have and what we propose? We yeah. don't have that document. I think that was, you know, that something would, tangible that would give us some insight on exactly where we are and where others are and uh, and what you're asking. You'll see one extreme from, from Buncombe County all the way to... Right. But, you know, my we, thing is, uh, talking to Kevin and Charlie and him, I, I understand completely about health insurance. at t goes up every year. I understand. All I'm just trying to put in your head, keep in mind, that our county employees don't really have a lot of benefits compared to other cities and counties. So this is why we constantly lose people to go to better, greener pastors. We train them, they move. So just keep that in mind. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I understand about the health insurance. That's, I'm just making a point. Well, I don't know. I don't know about your point because I don't have the facts in front of me, and I don't think you have them either. But I, I mean, I understand. I accept you. You've heard that the uh, Gilbert County treats your people better. I don't know. We need to know the facts before we make a decision. But in regards to what you presented strictly for the health insurance aspect, that sounds totally reasonable to deal with the health uh, aspect of this part of the budget and look for those other benefits that uh, may be comparable to Burke, Caldwell, or whoever you choose. We'll provide those to you all. And just on the health insurance part, next year I want the, you all to be more involved once we get the uh, start off early the uh, year out at the very tail end of it. So we'll make sure that you guys are involved. Uh, it, early it's a process. gagger. I'm a, I'm a, it's a gagger when you look at health insurance. I, I want you guys to see the very what we see. dollars plus per month health insurance premium for it, this whole thing. Well, one of the things that, that one of the things that, that that I've asked the manager to look at is that I've been contacted by local pharmacies who feel left out as a result of uh, uh, their ability to compete with some of the big box stores, and I'm still not completely satisfied that we are, um, and we got to have those local pharmacies. Those local local pharmacies provide an invaluable service to our community. They deliver. They deliver to our shut-ins, um, and if, if you want to, uh, if you don't believe it, just go look and see how, how, how many of those cars ride in the county, the entire county. And what else did you do this week? So, I'm just curious why we ain't using our own cars. Downstairs? Mm -hmm. At the county okay. employees can use your own? <coughs> they have that option. And just for clarification, I mean, this recommended budget, you're pulling a million dollars out of the general fund to put into the health, the health insurance fund. The health insurance fund. Yes, but that ultimately, you're pulling that out of the fund. Right now, we've got roughly a million and a half in that fund. You're running dry. And yeah, it used to be very healthy. We're Four million, and that's all just going down real quick. In discussions, it was where all indications point to this being a very bad year. Uh, but if that's not right, then we have to make significant changes next year. We don't have to our plan, plan to plan to what even even bigger than this was. And this plan is a one. I, I know a few weeks ago we heard different things, but it's a one year plan, right? Yes. Not a three year plan. It's a one year deal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for go back and look at these. So we go back out in the year, then this year. I think we go back and look at the. Uh, this meeting for the last couple three years we got to this topic we talked about I got the insurance and we you know and the the, the sentiment then was we in very good shape we in very good shape but there again we talked about it back then it's a bad year we're not in very good shape three years ago we were yeah and so the sun was shining three years ago and now it's, it's cloudy and overcast I said I'm glad there's yeah, a when the sun was shining we stuck we stuck some Hey, away in the barn for these well, years because not it's been a lot different. Uh, I would definitely like to see what the cities in, the, in our county are, are distributing for health care and how much of their, their incre uh, health insurance has increased over the years, or, or is there an option that we can group everybody together and be on one insurance plan? But I don't know. We, we've looked at that. We've talked, I've talked to Rich, that with John and, um, and Chris, the interim manager of Reasonable. 
they looked at in the past and just didn't seem to come to fruition. They reminded me of the, what happened with the NC ACC when it had everybody together and self imploded on it uh, with that. So we can look at it, but it, it they may not want to be part of us because we so this bad year we had. I wouldn't want to be part of well, us. I mean, if we had a bad year, why didn't they have a bad year? <clears throat> different. It's, I mean, different people. We. I've been in these I mean, discussions in the past with the when I worked there, and it was bad years. And we had the same type of discussion sitting around that we're having right now. Yeah. And some of the things they had to do, guess what? Exactly what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Exactly what we're talking about right now. And then, uh, having bought some insurance for a lot of group, uh, the idea that you're automatically going to get a savings by increasing the size of those insured with under, doesn't work that way. There's no economy in larger numbers. It's actually an increase in cost. And a lot of places are going to flat fees. You get X amount of money, go buy your own health insurance for that reason. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just talking about health insurance. And again, well, again we might, if, if it starts to look bad next year, we might have tears. But it just it all depends on what it looks like. We don't know what's going to happen. This year, and I guess the last part of that is we had to go up. Uh, we anticipated 18 percent increase on the post 65 retirees due to an increase in the premiums and those who were eligible. Um, on that page, we have general fund significant capital, and the first part is information technology. The two that are on here, I'd like there to, to mention because I'm very limited on my experience with IT, so if you can mention what those two are for. One is the computer associated hardware replacement and then the core infrastructure replacement. Yes, so the first one is the computer replacement plan. That is a direction from you guys as a board uh, three or four years ago when I started back here. So we didn't have aging equipment and we stayed current on our technology. So that's actually the fourth year of the cycle, replacing all laptops and desktops through the county. Uh, there is one caveat with that. Um, I'm actively working with departments that can receive other funding. Um, and any department that can receive funding for those hard part replacements, uh, we use that funding from the state or federal or grants uh, so we don't pull it from our budget. So we did have a really good year this year uh, with some of the COVID funds and things that we could replace. And then the core infrastructure is just everything that's behind the wall socket. It's your network switches, your servers, everything like that. And we are have a five-year cycle of replacements and upgrades on those, and we're in year three of that plan. Question. Um, actually, two questions. First question is on the uh, the network switches and the, what was it good at the nine one one center. Is there any reason to believe that the state might start easing some of those restrictions on the cash cow they have in the bank? To allow us to spend some of those 911 funds, I know you know once that 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 pot of money grew so big, they loosened some of the uh, uh, eligible expenses in the past. Do we have we heard any rumblings on that at the state 911 board? We had a nod, and that money is very close to being guarded by our legislature. Okay. Um, they said before when they released it before that it would never happen again, and it has not. We don't, we've actually reached out to them for other things on the TDMA, TDMA radios to see if some of those funds could be free of and I heard response to So I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I would say it's highly unlikely. Yeah. So we actually have an open request with them right now on some um, never fail projects where we can roll servers to other places. Um, and they're not actually even fully funded that entire project. So some of that is coming from that infrastructure. Okay. And the second thing I was going to ask that deals with IT is that I noticed in this, uh, you know, the governor did a press release and prioritizing some of the funding that come down from the federal government to the state. And one of the things that he put high on his uh, list was uh, uh, infrastructure for uh, uh, broadband. And I'm just wondering if we think there's going to be a uh, any grants come available at the state level that we may need to set aside some capital money to match if they do in order to 
address the issue that we have from the across the county. I mean, there, there's a there's going to be a lot of money out there for broadband, uh, whether it's matching or just straight grants it is certainly an unknown. Um, in speaking with some folks that are certainly more in the know at the federal level, we're 10 years away at least on really solving the problem. Uh, it's an extreme expense to get broadband everywhere as far as the hard wiring things. So, but it's an unknown whether um, whether we're going to have to match things or they're just going uh, going to pay 100 percent of it when they do things. And I just said that because I knew with our capital improvement uh, holding account, we have some particular you might as well call it encumbered money. What we're going what we want to use it for. And I was just thinking if, if it may be time to start looking at at trying to put away some monies for. Uh, any potential matching fund or small projects that may present themselves. The great grants, are they typically matching or? Not currently. Um, and actually this week is a big week with a lot of uh, that we are, I'm actually participating in a seminar for Rockingham County with um, the DIT department which handles the great grants and we're talking about the status of where we are and where we're going. And part of that is the Reasonable Area Foundation and the PAN organization through Cone. Um, and so there, we have formed a group with them in trying to come up with a plan for Rockingham County. So when some funds come available, we have a better plan of where the needs are and what the uses could be. And we also are looking for local funding through some of the funds that are out there, such as Golden Leaf. So some of those may require matching funds from the counties if we're reaching out to those. But for us, the state and federal, thus far, there have been none that required matches. Like I said, I just thought of that. Thought it might be something we consider when we sit here doing the budget. And you also, at some point in time, we'll have to, you all have to decide on how we spend the American Rescue Plan funds. But that broadband is an eligible expense in that. Of course, North Carolina, you can't, there's a no fee with the, uh, but you can provide, potentially provide grants to providers of that. So that's, that's an option. I mean, it's a, so that's a, a main goal, and that's one route you can go with some of those funds. With the transfer that's going to be recommended at the June 7th meeting to move money uh, from the general fund to the capital reserve fund to kind of start to save money for the CIP that we'll go over. Um, the CIP doesn't use all of the money that's going to be the recommendation, so you will have some flexibility there with already designated money, not for broadband, but for capital uh, in that fund. You wouldn't have to take from the general fund balance. You could take from your capital reserve fund during the year if the board so chose so. As you saw with the last great grant, it's large expense, very little return as far as number of customers reached. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, so there's two great grants that Rockingham County has received. The first one... Uh, which was near $500,000, and we have 33 houses that have received. Now, they are in the Bethany area and the Humphreys Ridge area actively um, planning out their project, which in that one we're hoping about 125 to 150 houses. But um, you're, you're, it's a huge expense to get fiber to the home, especially in our rural areas. We are looking at some potential stop gaps for wireless technology. But we have a beautiful countryside. It has lots of fields and hollers, so um, it doesn't work as well as it does down east. I think there's a greater likelihood of, uh, as far as what the governor's doing, uh, funding that through the great grant as opposed to creating a different uh, delivery method. Okay. Anything else IT related? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on page 10, the Stoneville, we're recommending for the Stoneville roof to be replaced. It has a lot of leaks in it. It just needs to be replaced since it's currently our, our building. Uh, one, we're recommending one new ambulance and one remount ambulance as we do every year with the stretchers and the cardiac machines. We are recommending to purchase three Lucas devices. Uh, these, in my opinion, are very well 
uh, money well spent. These are basically machines that you put on a, a patient that provides constant compressions. <clears throat> and it, it is a, it's a great system. I didn't know it existed until Kate showed me a while back, but they're very good for those who are going through stress. Um, Sheriff's Office in Jail, we're recommending seven patrol cars and one detective vehicle. Recommending re to replace the Axon body cameras and associate equipment. They replace the, the, uh, these cameras about every two and a half years. Recommend replacing a jail transport van and recommend replacing the outdated jail timekeeping system. In public health, replacing uh, Ford Taurus with the SUV, uh, basically with the rough terrain and inclement weather, we're able to go out and get nurses to come in if we need to have them in. But these funds are coming from the, the public health escrow account. In social service, recommend replacing two Ford Tauruses with a van and a Ford Escape. Of course, 50% of this will be reimbursed to us. And the bottom is cap and fruit plan. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I don't want to interrupt you. It's on the road. Uh, why a Pathfinder? I don't think you know the reason it's other than it's just a four wheel drive and it's on state contract. It's, yeah, it's four wheel drive, it's on state contract, and it seemed that price is not going to be too far out of line with anything else that's four wheel drive in that area for an SUV. And it can pull our trailer. Pull the trailer? And it can pull the public health trailer. It can pull the public health trailer. Okay, but I, mean, I mean, I just wonder why we didn't do Explorer or. We can check what? locally. I mean, it's. If, if they can beat state contract tremendously, I mean, we can look well, local. A Nissan dealership here, look. Yeah, we, we need to look locally first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the cap and proof plan, again, would, uh, my recommendation would be to designate five and a half cents to fund a capital projects going forward for a continual funding stream. I've asked Paul to kind of run down the CIP since he's uh, he, he's been very, very involved with it. So... We can, as part of this year's budget process and adoption, we would ask that the board consider adopting the full capital improvement plan that we've gone over uh, with you in the past. Um, I'll just highlight real quick the projects that are in there for this year, uh, but the capital improvement plan is a five-year plan um, that's revisited every year. So what's in there this year is a roof replacement for DSS. Uh, it's one of our oldest roofs. Um, an animal shelter generator. Uh, animal shelter is a 24-7 operation during bad weather. Um, when power goes out, they still have to be able to clean. They still have a lift station dedicated just to that animal shelter. Um, governmental center paving parking lot. This would repave DSS and uh, the governmental center side. Governmental center roof. Um, I can see from some of the ceiling tiles over there, we've had some leaks. Um, so this will help take care of that. Uh, the uh, mark. So replacing the HVAC at the mark. Um, that is included in here, the 625,000, yes, sir? Keep going, Alan. Okay. Um, that's an item that we wanted to bring up for discussion with the board. Um, I think everybody's aware that there's a, a significant HVAC problem at the old jail um, where the mark is located, the old courthouse. The recommendation, I believe I don't want to, but the recommendation from the manager would be that if, if we were to do this for this amount, that we... Uh, make it contingent on turning the building and future facility improvements and repairs to the museum and archives. And by the way, we're looking at every other outlet of funding that we can. We, we talked about a couple of other options. Have they been explored? We we're, we're, we're applied for a grant. We would have quite a bit of skin in the game because I think it's a dollar that they would fund every three dollars we fund, but still it's it's more than, than nothing. Mm -hmm. I think it's 200 them, 400 us. But again, it's just a grant. You may or may not get it, and it may not be. And we, we're, we've talked with uh, uh, Wentworth, had some discussions with them. Um, anyway, we're looking at all of the avenues we can. Uh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's more than our budget for the whole economic development team down there. Um, and my question is, 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 have we done an evaluation of the entire facility to see if we're to make sure we're not throwing good money after bad. Uh, if that facility has other issues that are making anywhere cost prohibitive, prohibitive to continue to try to make repairs down there, uh, I mean, at this rate, I'm wondering why we built a new one if we keep 
maintaining the, the yeah. other one at that level? We 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 blew, we forgot the facilities. We got a team a team that means not the facilities we made, but a team that's actually met. And if you build a new one, it's gonna be millions of dollars. It's gonna cost millions just to tear down homes. I don't I don't I don't I don't know what the I know we, we also we fund the mark what uh, about fifty thousand a year. That was brought to my plus other expenses. expenses. Plus other expenses. But my, my question is uh if we hired a, a, if we paid somebody uh, to go through and do do an inspection of that facility to make sure before we even consider dropping six hundred fifty thousand dollars, and and I still have some concerns about it even then, but to make sure that there's not other structural issues with that facility uh, prior to us spending spending that much money. There there are other issues. I mean, there, the, the plumbing. The roof, roof. Um, asbestos. I mean, the list is long, but distinct. Yeah, right. Is yeah. that where Mark wants to be? Yeah, I mean, they've indicated that that's where they want to be. Again, if, if I, my recommendation would be if you spend that amount of money, you turn, and I told them, well, you turn the key over. Well, I thought that's yeah, what we did. Me, me and Charlie totally talked about that. Spooked them into the jail. You're right. right. I mean, me and Charlie yeah. talked about that. If we pay for this air conditioning, we'll just go ahead and turn the building build over to them, and whatever problems they got, they, they, can, they can raise the funds. Well, How much is budgeted for the other problems? Because it's listed on the manager's budget that we got on Thursday on page 55, Mark Repairs. Um, we don't have a set of amount for it. It just falls under general building maintenance. What page, Kevin? That's what was emailed to you on Thursday. I mean, yeah. so how many square feet in that facility? Forty thousand feet, in forty-four thousand feet, it's something like that. And that's just that's not the jail side. That's just the the courthouse side. But so, how much did you say, Ronnie? I've got there, it. There, there's no set amount. We it just falls under general building maintenance, like a lot of our buildings. But what have we, we been for, spending on it? I'm sorry. It looks like it's eighty-five thousand that you put under general. That's for every building. Yeah, for right. every building. So how much you've been spending on the mark? A year, what would you estimate? It's probably five or six thousand. So it's, it's not a huge number, but it, it just depends on what happens there. You know, some some years it's not great, some years it's not a thing. So, but that would be my guess. The concern, I think, would be. We built a new facility because we knew that facility was old and had problems, and um, and so now it's as you said. How, how many other issues are still there? If you fix one, is it going to actually make that building usable for a significant period it's of true. time? Is this what uh, your conversation with Mark? If we pay for the air conditioning, they'll take the building over. Well, we we we've, we've talked about that. We discussed that with them, and uh, last meeting we, we had. Yep, we talked about options of possibly building a new building. Um, and the question is, you know, for the kind of money that, that we're paying them now, what kind of building would that fund? I mean, you're looking at the the, the need. I mean, just the displays themselves. I mean, when they say. I wouldn't say 40,000 square feet, but it would definitely be more than 20,000. And when you build something like that, it's, I mean, that's millions and millions of dollars. That well, we're giving them $50,000 a year, so that's that'd go a long way. <laughs> yeah. Well, but to quote a dear friend of mine, are we just giving them the keys to the Titanic? <laughs> <laughs> that's a smart friend. <laughs> I think what the, what the board could do if you chose to, this is the list of projects that are funded in the general fund meeting. With approval of the budget, start July 1, they can start now. You could designate money in the capital reserve fund that can't be spent without board action in the future. So the money's there. It's sitting over in the capital reserve fund pending whatever further studies that you'd like to do. Uh, or you could just not fund it at all, leave that money in the all capital right, reserve fund. So, so repeat what you just said. Sure. The, the, the money's in the capital improvement plan. But none of the monies would be spent for any project so, without it coming before us, or would we have to designate? So you have kind of two different ways of, of capital improvement plans. You have what are you going to do this year, and then you have what are you saving for for the future. Right. So these are all the projects that would be done this year. 
In addition to these, there's two other projects, the radios and, and another one I can't think of. We'll get into that, it. Yeah, we'll get into it. That you're saving for, you're designating it in the capital reserve fund. So if you wanted to consider this item more, look into it more before you committed to putting it in the annual budget, you can pull it out of here and designate it in the capital reserve fund. Now we can't spend out of the capital reserve fund without board action to move it back into the general fund where we can spend money. Well, I can cool. tell you, Mr. Chair, I'm not ready to spend six hundred twenty-five thousand without a little more information. Yeah, it's cool. Hang on one second. Go ahead, uh, Pat. There are some, uh, I guess, refinance avenues for governmental units that tie into new construction. Um, that I think I know USDA does some of that and. Uh, so, do we have any debt on the books that would make sense to refinance if we could with new construction? I know we also started the process to refinance some debt that was just a straight refinance that's not tied into any sort of new project. Uh, because $50,000 per year would go a long way towards paying a debt on an annual basis. Well, actually, probably about $57,000. And if you also built something that included the library administration, then you'd be at about 65000 So we've, we've just had our financial advisors look at all of our debt and we refinanced the ones that made sense that, that generated a return to us um, and we closed on that September 2020. So right now everything has been looked at and has very low rates. Um, we do have the ability to, to finance new construction we are anticipating going to the LGC for approval to issue debt to build the RCC Workforce Development Center um, in the January timeframe. So if we're close enough to moving forward with something, we can do all that as a package and have two different you know, amortization schedules, two different buildings. Um, and I know we've talked about some school needs out there and that will probably come up at a later date if that moves forward. So we have some things that are sort of in our um, and our timeline that we think are coming up for financing, we could do some things like that. Uh, but right now, our debt payments are as low as we have really good rates on everything. I guess for that kind of money, what kind of a building could be built for, for that kind of payment? I'd ask that? Commissioner Hall that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I haven't built a few. Uh, if, if you put a steel, bit, steel building up, you know, it's at least eighty dollars a square foot, and that's, that's just slab and steel. That, that's yeah, and that's, that's kind of before you start adding stuff yeah. to make it exactly. serviceable. Yeah, that's kind of gone not, by the wayside these days. Yeah. And metal building prices are going up like wood. Um, Probably not the most optimal time. To yeah, 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 it's it's not the most optimal. I think I'm time becoming a building. greater fan to tilt up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this: Is there any other facilities across the county that would accommodate? We we look. I mean, we don't. County does not own anything that would accommodate that. Well, Mr. Chair, I'd be in favor of uh, uh, moving this particular line item over to a capital savings account and have staff further investigate the facility itself and what other options will be available for our consideration. Yes, I, I agree. Do we I'll want second. that as a formal motion? No, we, we're good. Okay, so we'll, we'll do well, that we'll as agree. a directive. I agree. I think we're all in agreement to that. But then again, uh, Martin probably needs a heating and air system. What are you going to do in the meantime while they're still down there? Well, they're, they're well, they've been operating, uh, well, they've been closed for years. And that's something else I'd really like to see. I, I, when they ask for this information, when we got this request from the board, do they ever provide any data as to how often that facility gets utilized and by whether it be school tours or they, just a general public? I, I, they, they gave us a, a, something that's out of date because remember they've been closed for over a year. Yeah. So they, they have some older information that they provided to us. Uh, did they give that to you, Paul or Lance? Did they give it? I don't that committee, I think they handed it. Yet. Yeah, let's do, request it again and just send it to all of us. And how does this impact our uh, seniors that are using the facility, this, this HVAC system? And the high school seniors as well. The, the, the robotics group and the, the senior citizens over there. It's all of them. Uh, I understand there's, we're also using the old jail for storage as well, I understand. 
Yeah, yeah that doesn't matter if we have to the heat and cool and flat. It's just basic brightness. Just got keep it dry. Yep, so uh, that we have uh, EMS mobile data terminals, those are just basically your computers and your connections. Uh, this would put in the EMS units the same technology that's in the sheriff's office cars to allow them to um, be better dispatched to, to calls. That's $80,000. Uh, your voice over IP phone system replacement, that's $400,000. Um, that's basically to replace our entire phone system in the county. Uh, the existing one was bought in phases, uh, with the earliest phase, I believe, being in 2006, and that technology just reached end of life. Um, library self-service checkout system, uh, that's a, that's 104000 dollars and 78 of that will be offset by an LSTA grant if we receive it. And Sheriff Evidence Building Improvements, that's really a generator for the evidence building, 65000 uh, to make sure that all the evidence is stored properly. And, uh, in the event that we don't have any power. So good. To the library self checkout system, will that impact our labor cost? I was one of them. Sure. <laughs> uh, There's certainly something that we will be investigating uh, if this project goes through. I think it has at Walmart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it should. Yeah. It should. But, um, all right, well, that was one of my questions. Um, the other one, as far as generators, we're making sure that we're not, I guess, buying generators in every department, right? I mean, we're sharing generators as much as we can. We, tried, we looked at the one for the jail. It would make common sense to have it looked at with the jail. For some reason, they didn't, and it would not accommodate that. We don't have, we, we don't have any generators over, over here. Um, we probably should, but we don't. We have a generator to, to, uh, to generate the IT when the power goes out. But we looked at tying in the, the generator uh, with the jail and the courthouse and just wouldn't accommodate it. I guess my, my thing is, I think there was a couple of times where I saw <laughs> generators for different things mm -hmm. in the budget and just making sure that we're sharing those between departments and not just having departments um, sure. you know, purchase generators because they need it because we can share those things across yeah. departments. And these are these are like permanent generators. They, they won't be ones that can be moved, but we do have we do have move, uh, portable ones. Yeah. Okay. Part of emergency management. That's what how we kind of lived along through the years. At emer if the animal shelter, if the power goes out, if emergency management has one, we'll bring it over there. Unfortunately, when the power goes out, that's usually when it's needed. Very important places too. Um, and that's what's recommended so far for next year uh, funding in the budget. So again, projects that will start July one approved. Uh, in addition, there's three projects uh, recommended as set aside in that capital reserve fund. It's basically just designated funds, but we don't start doing anything yet. First one's three hundred fifty thousand dollars for a county uh, agency micro radio replacement. Uh, I think you're all familiar with that project. But the state is transitioning all the uh, radio towers to a different technology, and by 2025, we have to be all of our radios have to be compliant with that type of technology, or they will not work. I mean, sure, you got you to gotta change all your radios. You know? Yeah, they have to. That's what I call them. Right. And, and that right. uh, also mm -hmm. affects fire departments and stuff like that, too. So it's, yes, yeah. you, you, you're going to be giving calls from the fire department and help from them, too. We have that. Yeah, we have that. And the radios are not cheaper. No. How, how, much are, yeah. how much are the portables in the radio? We use the portables in mobiles. Right. right, so we're, we're talking. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Uh, the portables are $4,500. And I mean, I'm not busy. So uh, with this, we'll be able to uh, change all the sheriff to the EMS radios over? Correct. 1.5. Does not cover any of the voluntary. No, no fire departments, no nothing. Just Are we looking at grant money to help the fire bombs out? I looked into it. I researched some of them, none of which have materialized as of yet, but we have looked into that. There's some grants out there. I wonder if we can uh, petition the state to tap into 911 funds to help with that. We tried, but again, as we were talking earlier, those 911 funds are tightly held, and it's, it's hard to get those funds released for anything. Don't know until you ask. And we also, as grants are again available, we have tried to purchase and apply for a grant for purchase for P25 compliant as we go. So we've been trying to get ahead of it, but when it comes to a four to $6,000 for a portal radio or a mobile unit, 
they're the same. I mean, they're expensive. Would, would you change radios if, if the state wasn't doing this? I'm sorry. Would you would change radios if the would state Would you change if the state was a change in their system? No. Uh, the change we're getting ready to go through is mandated by the state. We would. We would would you do it for your own purposes? Or the, is the only reason you're doing this because the state is mandating it? That's the main reason. I mean, radios need to be updated from time to time, and, and that's the information the state pushes out. You know, you got old radios that need to be updated. The ones right now that we have, the Motorola XTL 2500s and XTS 2500s, the maintenance life on them is over. You can no, 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 I, I accept all that, and, and I, actually, I understand it. I, I've, I've had some experience in that line. The thing is, it ends up being a state mandated expenditure of money if you don't have a choice. And the and it's one of the things the Association of County Commissioners did set against. And uh, if we've got this problem, other counties have got this problem. Yeah. Well, it's a significant unfunded mandate. Absolutely. I understand why the problem is they, they put the infrastructure in place. They daisy, daisy changed this thing from Murphy to Manio, and suddenly there's a bill of goods and they've changed the rules on us a little bit. And, we use it as our primary communication, and then we're, for lack of a better word, we're subject to whatever rules they put in place, and ever how they want to change our infrastructure. We have to get the new toys to play on. And, and this is not the first time it's happened. Right. And it won't be just, the last. Just out of curiosity, as we're making these changeovers, is this system backwardly compatible? If we've got some of the fleet that, that's not been updated, some has, Will, will they be able to communicate with each other? Or they can until 2025. When they do the cutover date on 2025, anything that is not TDMA compliant will not operate on the system. So, so my, question, my question is, if we did this over a period of the next couple of years, we, we would be okay yes, to do it? We're, we're buying the compliant radios now. Yeah. So any radio that gets replaced, we're putting it on that technology that will work in 2025. So what, what you tell me is is this Viper replacement is not all the radios that we have? No, not this. This The total project cost would be about $1.5 million. This is only 350000 of that, and so, that's not including the fire department. I just want, right, I just want to be sure that as we replace these radio, the new radios, that, that we're not making those older radios where they can't talk to each other. And so that's the reason uh, I asked that question. Radio is going to be Absolutely. Yeah. I had a question for you, Rodney, while you're here. Uh, the sheriff, you may chime in on this too. What are we doing, or what are we doing now for a, a countywide backup if we, if we, for some unknown reason, have a uh, uh, Viper go down and it was for an extended period of time? What are we, are we working on the low band or we've got a, we still have the UHF VHF system, but there are some agencies that when we went 800 or the county went 800, they chose to go away from those radios, so they don't have a backup plan. Yeah. We have a system in place, but not all agencies can utilize that system because they don't have the old UHF VHF radios. DMS can, church department can, fire department can, because the sheriff allow his mutual aid uh, channel to be utilized as a fire backup as well. There are some agencies that do not have factor simply because they got rid of the old technology. Can we maintain those licenses so we can still fall back on our analog system? If it goes down, like when we had that fire situation at center, you know, we can, we can flip over. Uh, but we do have capabilities to go back to the analog and maintain those licenses. By Mr. Case helping us out there, uh, we can still call them. And, and I think that's one of the things that we did when I was still there is we maintained the license, but there was still some. You know, there's expense of maintaining a whole infrastructure that you never going to, you hope you never have to use, but you, you sit there and pour a lot of dollars into it just to maintain it. Uh, so, yeah, I just, I appreciate you in the back of my having a solution for when that does happen because it will occasionally happen. And the Viper system is built with a lot of technology to guard against that, their microwave. Their microwave to each other. They have backup generator on every tower, so it would take a big event to drop the whole micro system. But again, you need to be ready just in case that were happening. Thank you, gentlemen. The uh, next set aside is tax replacement software. Um, 
the current software system actually has no problems right now. It's just the age of it that gives us pause. It's been used since 1996, 97. Um, and the total cost to replace it is about a million dollars. So we know at some point we're going to have to replace that system. Um, and so we want to just start to set aside money every year so it doesn't creep up on us. Um, and the final one is uh, the future public facility projects. This has been a $100,000 annual set aside, I think, for the last three years. Um, and really, it's, it's, a, it's a way to, to gather money for facilities needs that we don't really know that we have yet, but that, that despite our best planning, might creep up on us. And it's something the board can use. Um, however, it sees fit as well. Any of these projects, you can change, uh, move money between the projects. Have to to. Are you envisioning that also being the infrastructure expansion stuff, or is that somewhere else? That, that's the one that, that we originally created so a couple years back. Exactly. Okay. Yep. The landfills uh, fund significant capitals is a silo for the posi shell. Posi shell is going to be a new way we do cover right now. It, uh, Daily cover requires six inches of dirt. The posi shells a quarter inch cover. It will spray on almost like a the little chocolate you put on ice cream that freezes over on top of it and it hardens. It's gonna do the same thing. It will save almost nine years of life for the landfill. So to me it was really much a no-brainer to, to go that route. Um, replace an existing 2008 water truck that has mechanical problems and the tank and the pump are both messed up. The cost of that new truck is $115,000. Um, we are recommending the creation of a landfill capital reserve fund to allow needed funds to accrue over a period of time. The two projects, one will have to replace, eventually replace a bulldozer that uh, we recommend replacing in 2024 and we recommend putting 200000 away with the purchase of this is a total of 640000 and the other is to put away $650,000 per year for the construction of cell 5 which the total cost of that is estimated $3.3 million. This project already has $1.4 million set aside for it. So all this is, as far as the consultant, uh, I know we ended up heavy in toys, you know, having to reassess our equipment. Um, but all this is... Uh, Compliant. Yeah, this is the heavy okay. equipment. Because yeah. we've ended up with a recommendation to increase the fees because the board didn't know, not this board, but the yes. solid waste board didn't really know how to operate. The it will be operating a lot more efficiently. Okay. And we're actually, yeah, we're, yeah. we'll be back with you guys in, in the future with some, some options. Okay. Um, new funds created for fiscal year 2021, as I mentioned, we're recommending that you all uh, develop a land Landfill Capital Reserve Fund set aside funding for future projects. There are five that we have to create to comply with GASP Statement 84, Judiciary uh, Activities, and the LGC uh, guidance on proper classifications. And you'll see down at the very bottom that it's the DSS, Representative Pay Accounts, Register of Deeds, Final Forfeitures, the Vera Holland Center, and Airport Grant Funds. If you have any more questions on that, ask the expert so she may be able to explain that. But the Vera Highland stuff was separate before. Are you just recategorizing, or right? So it had originally been set up as a fiduciary fund, and after evaluating it, it, it really doesn't qualify for fiduciary. It really needs to be special funding, so we moved it to its classification. That's just more of a technicality. All, all yeah, those okay. are technicalities, really. And we have two separate funds: one Vera Highland for the library, stuff the library, and one Vera Highland for the Vera Highland Center. Right, that That's trust the where those funds come from. We're very specific on what percentage of those distributions go to which, the, whether it's the Beer Hall Community Center or whether it's for Stone programs. So we have to keep that separated, separated to that trust. On page 13, uh, as, as you all are aware, we're going to try a new program with the litter program. We will be offering the community an opportunity to pick up miles. We, we've uh, Recommending $75 a mile. We budgeted $50,000 for the program, so this would allow up to 670 miles of roadway annually. We've already had several people um, request to be put, their groups be put on the list. So we've had several nonprofits, not people, right? Well, nonprofits slash indi individual folks. Groups. Groups. Well, say the commissioners, I mean, any of five individuals. I mean, it's not necessarily nonprofits. Correct, Ronnie? That's correct. Like civic groups or something. Or, or just small teams. Just anybody. I mean, it, it, 
if they do the job, if there's five guys that want to get beer money for the weekend, they pick up the trash, and we approve that they've done a, the, the job, then, hey, I mean, it's... Sounds like we're funding the sheriff some work. <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> um, the uh, contingency, I'm sorry. Okay. Contingency, there's 250000 in it. We've had that in there several years. We, we don't try, we try not to use that, but it's there. It's good to have there in case we do come up with some issues that come up during the year. Um, in education, the public schools requested no increase in current expense allocation and an 844% increase in capital outlay. I'm recommending that both the current expense allocation and the capital outlay remain the same as the current year. They do have restricted sales tax funding. We project this, this fund will have $1.8 million at the end of the year. And we'll add another 2.3 this upcoming year, which will be a total of $4.1 million available for them. Uh, so that would be a good... Uh, Chunk of change for them to be able to use for capital projects. Have you heard anything from the school board about any projects that they have that they want to place this money in come for? I have not yet. Have you? Um, I know they they talked about some needs. Um, I have already gotten our financial advisor to go ahead and update the affordability financial affordability study based on these numbers that we have here. So we're ready on our side to show how much they can afford with this money and debt going forward. So when the schools have their plan ready to come in and request, we'll know what we can fit in there. Thank you. That's exactly where I was going. Yes. And they've got a large sum of money coming from the federal government. That much larger than us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're wanting uh, a little bit of um, joint uh, communication to make sure everybody's on the same page and does expenditure. Yeah, I know the um, liaison and, and the chair have suggested that we possibly look at a joint meeting and they go over some of these things. And uh, I'd suggest that maybe after the budget's adopted, we'll, we'll look into that look at their capital needs. So we may coordinate a joint meeting. Do you, want me to, what, do you guys want to pull that together? I mean, we're probably looking. I don't know that they have guidance yet. On, That's just kind of what we've been waiting for. Yeah, on. as far as what they can spend it on and what they can't spend it on. I'll give it Rodney and find out. Kind of but you know, we, we've started these meetings over and over again. Uh, you know, if we would continue with general purpose representatives from their board and our board. Yeah, I think that's the right. idea initially was for Charlie and I to get together with. Uh, with their liaison and chair and sit down and have some discussion and figure out whether we need both boards together or so you got it. Okay, good. Yeah, we'll yeah, let's let's do that first. We'll handle that first. Okay, taking that off. Um, RCC has requested eight point six percent increase in operations and a thirty three percent increase in capital outlay. I'd recommend uh, the current expense allocation and capital outlay remain minus the debt service and the capital outlay. The reason I say that is because RCC included the debt service payment for the science lab in the capital aid request, and we've already had that accounted for in our debt service. Page 14, uh, note the, we have the fire tax districts, no fire, uh, no fire districts requested an increase. And that is the, the end of the, the summary, and we'll just go briefly, if you don't mind, the tabs. Tab two is a brief overview of the budget. Oh, the right. item. Yeah. Let's, uh, okay. let's talk about a two-minute research. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I'm swimming over here. All righty. Back in session, Mr. Manager. Yes, sir. Um, I was just going to go through the tabs again. The meter, but I guess it's going 11 on to talk about each individual um, budget that we have. But tab two, this is a brief overview of the budget. The biggest item in the revenues is the loss of the 40 foster care funds from the state. That's about $760,000. Tab three is a capital outlay request. The request is $7 million. We're recommending the consideration of $4 million. And I've asked Paul to kind of briefly go over those. So I, I, I don't know if the board has any questions about anything specific on the, on the capital sheets. Um, the main 
things that we've already kind of talked about, the um, ambulances under EMS, emergency devices, and I'm trying to get the highlights here for you. Um, a lot of what's in engineering and public utilities is the what's in the capital improvement plan. Um, so your roof, your paving, um, that sort of thing. Um, IT, we've already discussed with the phone system upgrade as well as the infrastructure so stabilization. The Mark HVAC will move out. Yeah, that, correct. That Mark HVAC that shows up there is not, will, will be moved out. Um, jail, we've discussed. Question. A lot of these departments, you know, they have computers and other IT type stuff in them. Is this coordinated through our IT department as well? I mean, everybody's not doing their own thing, right? It is. The only time that you would have um, somebody buying their own computers is if they have a specific revenue source that lets them pay for it instead of us. But yeah, every, every purchase. But they still yeah. coordinate that purchase Absolutely. through IT. Okay. Um, I think that's all Yeah, I think we've covered just about all the high-level capital that's in in the entire budget. Other than you guys have any questions on tab three? Okay. Page uh, uh, tab four is just a 10 year permanent position history that we try to show you all every year. <laughs> tab five are these are the recommended legal replacements that I mentioned in the budget message summary. Six is just your vision, mission statement, strategic focus. We got some additional information coming on the vehicle stuff. We did, you do. You do. Absolutely. Seven is the fire tax districts for the um, for all the fire tax. Again, no, no request to increase. Eight are the fees. I asked Paul to kind of get the highlights of those. Uh, the first one is off duty officer fee. Um, that's just increasing that five dollars. That's the amount that's paid to officers for uh, working off duty. Uh, <coughs> just to stay competitive with surrounding your um, I it's gone up in several years. Planning is actually two fee reductions from what's in the fee schedule. Um, I'm not, uh, my understanding from speaking with the uh, plan director was uh, these amounts were what they had been charging, $500 less, and they felt that was a fair <coughs> amount, even though the fee schedule was higher. So this is to reflect that based on what our, our consulting costs are. Youth services uh, has one increase to an existing fee that's small for a book, but then also this is the first year they're going to start charging <coughs> fees for. Uh, services that they provide, um, things like assessments and uh, screen and uh, yeah, counseling, that kind of thing. Uh, yes, sir. Are any of these services that they're providing available in the private sector, locally, or in the private sector? Start there. I would imagine. Are we competing with the private sector with any of these services that we're now trying to charge for? I would imagine you take those funds at the same time. Services, they can choose to go to use services or they can go to other providers. And that's what I'm asking you. Are we, or is the county competing with other providers, private providers, with these particular services? Is that person, I mean, essentially, possibly, yes. I'm trying to understand. Well, it's a simple question. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if I can make it any more simple, but are we? Competing with anyone in the private sector when we provide these services in the community? From the bottom line, yes. I guess you could say that would be. Because if I'm a person that needs to go for that service and I'm looking at these providers and these services is in that provider array, then yes, that would be so. So I think what he's driving at is. Why would the government compete with a private company for those services? And, and that's his question is, are we competing? In other words, are we providing a service that a private company locally is providing? So we ultimately are competing with that private company. But we're not, we're not providing all of those services that other companies are doing. So for example, intensive income, we don't do that in these services. So we focus more on JCPC programs and then services specifically under the social services um, paradigm, such as trauma-informed services. 
Well, I know a little bit, a bit about it, having been involved over youth services for a while, and I know I've heard judges specifically say uh, you need parent counseling, contact uh, youth services to set it up. So I don't know if that's a, uh, Felissa, I don't know if that's competition or not. If the judge could have said, go get it somewhere. Because if the judge said, go get it somewhere, now we're competing with it. If they say, and and that's, that's my question, is, is that are any of the services that, that we provide through youth services <coughs> that we're funding from the county <coughs> or from the state, are any of those services competing with anybody in the private sector? Not that all of them do. You know, obviously there's some services that we provide that's not provided to the private sector. I'm just asking, is any of the ones that we do provide currently available to be provided by someone in the private sector? There are a few. Well, That's all I got to write down. I guess my other question is, if, if they are, uh, are these market rates for these items, or, or are we undercutting? Or are we just picking a number out of the hat? Yeah. Well, and I guess I'm getting back to, I mean, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that, you know, we sit and look at the, the, the services of the uh, of, uh, uh, other, in other areas. But that, that where we rely on the private sector to provide that service, and we don't. I think we used the term non-compete, <laughs> and if we're doing it in, we just. I just think we need to be really, really careful. Okay. We need to be really, really careful that we're not competing with somebody that opens up a, uh, you know, goes to school and comes back or whatever, and provides this particular service to our youth or anybody else, and we <coughs> compete with them at the county level because. That's, that's that's not really <coughs> what Tara has done this year is that she has really started to look at that and is starting to push those services more into the areas that need to be done and not necessarily the ones that are being provided by private providers in the area well, I just I just hope that we we continue to move in that direction we because are. we've had that conversation about the rate at which we're funding and the rate at which like-sized communities are funding, and we still have a lot of work to do. I mean, it's just, there's other, not that that's not a need, I just wanna make sure that, that we're filling the gaps and we're not going out of our, not driving in our lane. We're driving in somebody else's lane. So I'll give you an example, Triple P. That is an evidence-based program. They are receive the training in that. That is going to be something that is part of that Family First Services Prevention Act that DSS has to go to. No one else in the county provides that. That's one of the things that she's got her agreed. training in. So that's the focus that we've been doing the past year. And I'm 100% behind it. I just want to make sure where I begin to struggle with there is a, a competing program or a service that's outside, uh, that's available in the private sector that the public sector is is providing and competing with the private sector. Okay. That's all I got at this point. I think that's so, yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I applaud you for looking at revenue sources. Thank you very much because if there is an opportunity to recover from either the private sector, private insurance, or through, uh, uh, through the will, private pay, or and there may be some Medicaid monies that may help this, and we are at, we are at least trying to recover some of our expenses by being revenue producing. I was going to say that once we get to youth services page, you'll just see uh, their county share general fund contribution is down significantly it, because it, of those positions that oh, they actually eliminated. Yeah, I've seen it. There. I've seen it, but I also want to make sure too. That's great that we are now charging. I just want to make sure that we're not charging, we're not competing with those in the private sector to provide the same services. Are we providing any services that are being underutilized? We're paying for someone to be here and we're just not getting foot traffic. And that goes beyond DSS. I mean, that... No, Tara did a very careful analysis of what her services are 
um, and things that she was doing, some of those have shifted and have been pushed together um, so there's a little better efficiency in what she's doing. And that, that's kind of what Paul was talking about when you get to that page. You can see what she's done with that. But we're still, our local match is still significantly higher than like-sized communities. Yes, correct. But is the recidivism rate for juveniles lower? Well, that was going to be my question because uh, Commissioner Perlin brought that up to me before. And I couldn't do an answer because we may be getting very good value for money. Maybe we need to be spending that much. His question, of course, is are we wasting money? Are we not getting all the money's worth? I'm, not, I'm just saying is this money could be utilized in other, is some of the gaps that we're filling not being funded as deeply as they should because we're such a, a broad sweep instead of a narrow sweep. I, that's, <coughs> that's my concern. Uh, but also, you know, at, at the level at which we're funding is significantly higher. We'll keep looking at it. There's no question that it's higher. The, the per capita cost is higher. We saw that comparison. The question is, what are we getting for the money? And I think some of the data, and I, I still question some of the, the data is hard to interpret because of the carryover. You know, I've talked to you about the carryover. And that's, that's you know, at the end of the day, when we sit and talk about what month, I'd like to know how many souls we helped in 12 months. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know that we're getting that because of the carryover data from month to month. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's all I have right now. For IP services, we have a couple small fee changes in public health. Uh, two of them are regarding Medicaid transformation, two of them are in the dental clinic uh, based on uh, their expenses. Um, environmental health did benchmarking during the current year of the fees that they provide uh, as such they came back compared to 13 comparable counties and they came back with uh, several mostly minor fee adjustments, some more significant um, to put us in line with what other counties are charging for these services. Um, and finally, landfill, uh, as we talked about, has kind of two categories of tip of Fee one is the tipping fee, so every tip fee that was $36 per ton is now $37 per ton. Um, and then also tires, as we kind of talked about the last few years, the cost for tires recycling is going up, and so this is to match our, um, so to get closer to our, our contract with our vendor that we have to provide the send these tires to. Any questions on that? All right. Um, that's not going to be a surprise. To them I've, to I've talked to them. I've, I've, we had a management meeting. I spoke to them. I'll, once it's all said and done, if after today goes well, then I'll confirm it with the cities and towns. He wrote back in the budget message. Yeah. So, uh, um, nine is your budget calendar. Ten is the budget ordinance, which has to have two things modified. Can't remember what those Yeah, just some small modifications. One, uh, let's see. The first is, it's still in here, says it's, Four seven seven cents going to the capital improvement plan. If uh, if after today the board feels comfortable with the five and a half cents, as we've discussed a few times, then that'll be updated to five and a half cents going to capital uh, for the capital improvement plan. The other is one that came up just recently um, in discussions with uh, the county attorney. I don't know if he's in here or not. Um, on page what would be page thirty seven at the bottom. So it's the second to last page of the budget ordinance um, under section six and under uh, item D. Uh, it says the manager has the authority to execute contracts as the lessor or lessee of buildings, land, equipment, vehicles, or other property provide such leases in one year duration or less than budget appropriations. Um, what, how, how this came up was we're looking at possibly uh, releasing a dishwasher in the jail because it's cheaper than actually buying one. Uh, is Mr. Attorney, and uh, the the question to the board was: Is that something that you want to just ha have the manager be able to handle, even if those small leases are over twelve months? Or is that something that the board would want to approve? Because I think the lease was three years, three years, and like I can't 
can't remember how many thousand. Do you remember, Shane, how much it was a year? What was the dishwasher lease a year? Uh, 189 a month. So you're talking. And that, that includes all the chemicals, everything that uh, uses. Uh, if you purchase the dishwasher, the chemicals and everything is going to cost you right at three. So you're talking just these small leases that might be part of normal uh, business. So the recommendation could would be to just remove um, equipment out of that list of things there. And that then would give the manager the authority to execute those contracts under the last item to approve and execute documents of a routine uh, nature incident to the work. What number are you on? Six. 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 Uh, D. Well, my concern from a legal perspective, you don't want, you don't want minor equipment everyday routine contracts to be held up in the process uh, that requires board approval. Plus you wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to load up the, the board, uh, the board's agenda uh, with, with these type of contracts. So you just want to eliminate the word equipment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Under section six, number D. Yes. Well, I guess, John, we could also just put a dollar limit on there. I agree. So that's, that was my favorite. Um, I mean, currently that dollar limit's fifty thousand dollars, right? Uh, on other yes, things. On transfers, yes. Um, is there a dollar limit on contracts right now, as far as our local operating procedure? Not, no, not that I'm aware. The the um, it's not a set of contracts, but the service agreements. Uh, that's the bullet right before that. The manager has the authority to enter into those service agreements so long as the money is budgeted. Um, it, this is different. In that it, it crosses years. I think that's why I was in there originally. It's not to do things that cross years and basically sign the board up for things uh, without the board knowing about it. But with these small incidental things, the board could choose to give that flexibility to the manager so long as the total term of the lease didn't exceed some dollar amount. I mean, I, I think from a transparency standpoint and just so that you don't end up with contracts that you know, just all of a sudden pop up as far as budget issues, I would think a dollar amount would be something that we look at, whether it's a total dollar amount consistent with what we got as far as the $50,000 or some other amount. Um, $50,000 over the life of the contract? Yes. Yeah, I'm thinking life of the contract, not per year. I mean, I, I would. Yeah. That covers me. I mean, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not to exceed fifty thousand dollars of the life contract. Or, or if you want to say, if the if the lease payments were under twenty thousand or twenty four thousand sure. a year, per per year, and and up to a three or five year contract. Yeah. I mean, but that would cover both of yours. Yeah. 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 I would. Do, yeah. do, do I like the life of Life of the contract keep it clean. Just like the, the life of the contract contract. would keep it clean. You're right. Just do yeah, fifty thousand yeah. life of contract. Yeah. You like that? We can work with the attorney and come up with the language just for that. Send it out to the board. Okay. Make sure you're comfortable. I think that's the thing to do. Okay. That way, we don't end up with a twenty-year contract that yeah. all of a sudden some future board find, and some future manager finds out about. Yeah. That. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I like the total dollar amount. <laughs> We say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys want to move to yeah. so the, and 11 again? That's when we start going through each department. So you can hand this however you want to. Um, start off with the governing body. Yeah, the only thing I'll say on the, the county play plan, it would be easier for me to read if it was broken down by grades versus. What are you talking about? When I sit there and look at a county play plan, when I look for a job, if I don't know what grade it's in, it's hard to find it more if I don't know how y'all need it. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we've had it in both. We've yeah. had it by grade order, and then we've had it by alphabetical for job title. That thing, what does the red stand for? The red are things that are either uh, newly added to the pay plan. Uh, I don't know if it's here. There's just no key. Oh. So, so that's why. Oh, yeah, I've got some right. red, some black. So. The, the red, um, Renee, as part of what she was doing this year, was uh, examining. <laughs> Actually, she's done, she's, done an audit. she's done an audit of a lot of uh, uh, HR type stuff. 
this year, if one of these is this, these are jobs that we actually already have and have had, but for whatever reason way. they haven't been on the paper. They're not new jobs or being hired or anything like that. Um, so it just puts them on there. I think a lot of it, when I looked at it, was just the terminology, like community paramedic. Uh, those are jobs previously they were under paramedic. So it's just clarification, um, things like that. But I'll add a few things from here on out. And we'll get you the, the pay plan by Greg. All right, uh, Governing Body. Same there. County Manager. Public Information Officer. I don't know where some of these things fall because of getting that line item information Thursday. So. I don't know where some of them fall because it really wasn't put together with these summaries. Um, so as far as, I'm, I'm assuming public information officer would include the peg channel? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. For some reason I'm thinking that when we started that, we were told some of that money would be self-sufficient or self-funding. At some point in time in the future, does that ring a bell? Or we'd be getting money from somewhere? We get 28000 from the state to cover okay. expenses. And we're also getting, I think, rentals. That's, well, they've applied for it. They've applied for it, and I think that's still in the process of coming up with terms that they're comfortable with. What, any, what about the other municipalities? They, they didn't apply. I think Reeds was the only one that applied so far that the, I'm aware of for the funding. But we're, we're broadcasting new, new meetings. Right. right. It's, it's up to those individual cities to have to apply for the funding that they can get every year. I think what we're trying to come up with uh, that COVID delayed us on uh, is a contract that they're comfortable with because they they're going to give us the money that they get twenty six or so thousand dollars. I'm sure it's going to come with terms about how much of their content is going to be on the channel. When is it going to be on the channel? Uh, it just seems like to me if they don't apply for it, leave the money laid on the table to help offset the expense for which we are incurring. Well, how, so how, how do we incentivize them to do that? I think we don't broadcast unless they apply. Well, and, and, and this, the Stonewall, Madison, Maiden, they don't particularly care about having theirs okay, currently broadcast. Wentworth, Reedsville, and Eden do. For some reason, I can't remember why Eden didn't. I think, think there were some issues at the time that we they didn't have the, the manager there. Um, Wentworth, I can't remember why they did. But anyway, well, the revenue that we get right now fully covers the cost of the pay account. That's um, just, for, just us, okay. our own so individual revenue. Um, did, did you put it gets a little bit more complicated to bring in more revenue and then the expectations from the cities. And right now we run 12 hours a day and we run 12 hours a day and then it's duplicated so we run even more time. It, it eventually gets to the position where we have to look at uh, possibly hiring somebody, which you can do after that money to manage that a little bit better. Because right now we're just using existing uh, IT staff to program it pretty simply. Um, but that, that's a big thing we've got to get into with this next little bit. Yeah, I'm going to expand the, the local transparency on the community. I, Absolutely. I think it's a good thing, especially if we can get uh, the funds to do it as an eligible expense by reachful and need participate. And having some and having somebody that one helps expand that uh, the programming uh, and the types of program about. And we do currently show there on oh, oh. They, I like to see all of them on, on TV, all of the board meetings and everything everywhere. You can't remember. We, we've all, offered it to them. To all of them. Yeah, some of them meetings. Them. You think that they will be all about transparency too? Um, safety and risk. That's finance. <laughs> do you guys want to do it? I mean, is this fine to do it this way? Yeah, that's fine. You're, you're one to ask questions on the line. Okay. Need to. Tax. Legal. Do, I'm sorry. Backing up to tax. Does, it, does this include? The additional monies that look to be set aside? No, so if you look at the second page under tax, page 52, that's your rebound budget. Uh, this year, we have been putting money towards that every year, and we will continue doing that after this, but since the board is looking at possibly 
going ahead and funding a reval this year out of unbalance. Uh, there's no money in here. It'd be outside of the budget. Okay. It's approved. If, if it's not approved, then you absolutely need to go back to sticking money here. Okay. And he, he, he does have the, the quotes in on the reval. We'll be getting you guys very soon on that. And okay. just, uh, I did check, and the state's not here from other locales as far as the increase in sales price being an issue. It's not that prices aren't going up. It's uh, some of it is they're on a regular four-year cycle as opposed to eight-year yeah. cycle. So yeah. I wonder too. Some of it is being that we've seen such an increase in ours, you know, compared to some of the other uh, tier one counties, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, but well, they're not doing it as as an issue. Uh -huh. You're right, it could be because of the four year. And whenever they did the last one, 2019 was right before it started really right. growing. Legal? Yeah, I got a question for Charlie. Are we talking about a contract attorney or part time attorney to yeah, help out our situation? Um, yeah, we, we've included in, we've talked with the council about it, we've included additional funding in. Um, his budget for outside council for uh, board of elections. Because okay. we, you know, this past year has been very time consuming for uh, for John. Closes a conflict. Yeah, so we included that in the budget. Good. 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 Would that be in his or in the board of elections? It's in his right now. We could move it over to the board of elections if that's what you would. I'd rather uh, see it under there. I just thought it would give us some oversight to choose who. They are an independent entity not affiliated with the county other than. Um, yeah, I mean, they need their own website. They need, it's completely independent. Okay. So we'll move it from, I can know, We'll move it from. Just a phone call, Kevin. I'm just talking out there. If it's under our legal, it's under our approval. No. You don't, you're saying you don't want it at all. It's not that under our approval. That means we pick the attorney, we do all that. I don't want to pick the attorney. That's their, they got a governing body that provides oversight, and that's just as they hire their employees. Sounds good to me. I mean, that's what One we thing that needs to be conveyed to them, though, is that, that they need to figure out when the attorney needs to be there because costs go up quite a bit. With, they can't. Oh, we give them money. We're not giving them more. They go broke. They go broke. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, speaking of elections, that's the next page. So you want to add the uh, the contractor or attorney to this budget here, right? Yes. How much? Let me put ten thousand in there. Ten thousand for contract attorney. Yes. I mean, I'm, is that reasonable? That's that's up, and that is a guess. That's all what they did. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> well, yeah, but you you can narrow it down. You know, you know what the retainer rate is, and you know what the per hour rate is, and how many meetings they have. Call do. meetings of all. Quite Here's a, what we need. Well, well you know, know it. How many call meetings they have last? I'm last year was not one. I think I don't know. Here's what we need to do. We need to give them a lump sum. They spend it on what they want to spend it on. When they go broke, they go broke. If they got money left over, then they got money left over. You know that. So then it suggests there's a man ten thousand. It'll be before that's theirs. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the total dollar amount. That's I'm not talking about. Yeah. And I'm talking about four hundred. What is four hundred forty-two thousand dollars a meeting? We're done with. It. Okay. Yes. I mean, and yeah, yeah, I understand now, exactly what you're saying. Okay. Now the question is. As far as that total amount, they've been with two employees for a long time. They've, they've presented a budget with three. So do they need 442 or do they need 400? I, I can't answer that. Well, yeah. Their board makes their recommendation on their budget. So they just have to make their recommendation. And well, they write the number. Two of them. Uh, you got your new director there. Chairman of the new director. Paul, oh, yeah. come on up. Because we, we need staff to understand they are independent, they're not affiliated, other than Rockingham County and their name and us funding. Um, yeah, I think, 
Well, so the, payroll, only, yeah. the only and payroll. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say the only place that gets muddy is that we still do their payroll, we still do purchasing, we have to follow all those relevant laws. Maybe. So that's mm -hmm. and that's the only it's, it's really not trying to get into their business as much as it is just follow the laws that we're supposed to follow. As far as policy, their procedures. Yeah, that, that, we, that we, we don't about. oversee them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, so unless we're required to by law. They need their own Insurance. Uh, well, they, they need some insurance because right. they're our county department as far as their budget goes. The state, they do though. have to follow the finance procedures, policies, and procedures as far as purchasing. Um, if they go over budget, I, we are held liable for that. We would be the the county would be the one that is gets the compliance um, thing in our audit because we let the, the department go over budget. So I do have the financial level of control over making sure that money is spent properly in accordance with laws, state laws and county policy, um, and that they do not go over budget. So I do have that, that I have to be concerned about the finance. Gotcha. So, so the, um, I guess the question for, for the director then is, do, do they need the three? Do they need the 442? Or is the 432 sufficient for the entire attorney? Yeah, where well, I guess so where these figures come from? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. They have their own governing body, so they're their own governing body votes on this budget. The question is, did their governing body vote for this budget? Yes, they did. Okay, because I know we got to some things before with the prior director, and that prior director, <laughs> so this like board director was board chair. Board chair. Operating. Board chair. Yeah, he was operating. Without anybody else knowing what was going on, so this, the, the board chair is here. My understanding is the board did vote on their budget that they submitted to us. Uh, there are some uh, some of the lines had justification, some didn't. Uh, but I worked closely with them just to get because that was my big thing was making sure it had been approved by their board, uh, and I think that was done. Well, yeah, we so, so, so pretty much the only thing we want to do is add the ten thousand legal expense to their budget. So, well, but if they requested 425, who told them that they should get 432? The only thing that we modified at all was uh, they requested the FICA, so that's the tax based on that, only on their uh, permanent staff. So they have other things that need FICA, and as part of our going through and looking at uh, benefits and whether everything lines up, we did go ahead and add in the FICA that should have been there for that. That's the only change that we made. But they're like temporary salaries and things like that. But I'm hearing from Pat, we may not be able to give just a lump sum and say, y'all are on the own because of what her requirements are. That's correct. And IT brought up something too as well. But you can say lump sum of $10,000 just for attorney fees. You, yeah, I mean, you, you, can, you can say that. You just can't say salary and stuff like that. Well, you can. It's just that whatever the budget stopped it, and when it gets to finance, it still will have to be a line item budget right. based so on have to budget how they need amendments it. to move money. Yeah. All right. If you can stipulate those have to go to the board. Board. And well, my question well, is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, in the budget is uh, almost sixteen thousand dollars for capitalized capital. What are we buying? Is that the um, where are you at now? That's not the where are you at the campus like the is what what line is that under? Is that under there? Under four one five seventy fifteen. Is that amended? Well, it's a twenty twenty one request. It's not recommended. I'm just wondering what the request was. What were we supposed? What did they want to buy? About the camera system. Um, that was my question. Where are you at? He's on the line item. I'm on the line the item. By the way, Lance, I'm just those out there. I like the line item much better than what you provided us. Hey, that's if we need I like the you guys yeah. want to get it. Well it just well it gives me some I like I just like it. I, Mr. Manager, I'd, I'd like to hear from the uh, uh, chair of the Board of Elections regarding the attorneys. Uh, amount that we're looking at. Is that reasonable? So the chair can't tell you very much about Please come up here. I can't hear you. Come up here. Come on. The chair can't tell you very much about 
um, the attorney's presence um, simply because the chair did not was not here during the time that he spent so much time at the meetings. Now, um, as far as I'm concerned, if you're getting ready to separate the attorney from what he's done in the past, then I say uh, I would like to ask you, just as um, Commissioner Travis said, that you set aside the amount of money that we will need. So if you're saying $10,000, if you want to set that aside, then I think that needs to be done. And, well, we, go ahead. and the Board of Elections has been with two employees as opposed to three for a period of time, I mean, a lengthy period of time, and has functioned with just two. So I'm trying to figure out why there's a budget for three. Well, you know what? They're barely functioning with two. And the reason they are functioning with two is because of what has happened in the past, what happened in the past to, for them to end up with two. So what I'm telling you is our director has plenty of work to do. Our deputy director has plenty of work to do. And then there's the senior deputy director that will also have plenty of work to do. Their job responsibilities are different. So that's one of the reasons we're asking for three. Yes, sir, go ahead. Madam Chair, I got a call last night from a, a commissioner from a different um, a different county, and he was asking me about a grant that's available. I want to know if I knew anything about it. I told him that it was having our budget hearing today for a, uh, a disabled voter machine or something like that. He said that they were talking about it uh, in the neighboring county, and uh, there was supposed to be some type of grant. He really wasn't sure how it operated. I really wouldn't either because I think the Board of Elections does a great job when you come up there and you have mobility issues. You pull up and somebody comes out there and greets you and gets your information, goes inside and brings you back the appropriate ballot. I just wondered if, if and that's why I asked, was that something that when I asked that particular capital item that was not included in the budget, I just wondered if that was it. Nothing. Okay. That's, that's all. That was my, my question because I said I don't know. It would be good if we knew more information about yeah. it. So that we could look well, he, that like I said, he, this was a phone call last night, and I, I said, well, I don't know. I'll, we just have to have a meeting tomorrow. I'll ask if they got it in, in the budget. Commissioner Travis, do you have a question? Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, I, I just want to say uh, uh, I appreciate you uh, coming here today, and Pauline, I, and I dealt with Pauline a little bit, and she's been excellent. I think y'all made a good hire. Uh, but So let me make sure I'm right. You're in agreement that uh, y'all pass this budget, and if we need to add legal to your budget, you're you're like the lump sum figure instead of something else. Well, I'm I'm saying that um, what I need to refer that to our director. How do you feel about that? Of course, you know, uh, we don't make decisions on our own. The two of us don't make decisions on our own. That's so we comforting have a, to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, what, what? I said it's comforting to hear because your predecessor did. I'm not here to I, talk about my predecessor. <laughs> right. I'm not even going to start. So, so, so I'm just telling you that we operate or should operate with the five members. Yes, now, you're asking group. us questions that we've not taken back to our board. So I'm just saying, we should be having that conversation with the So board. we can uh, approve so adding the lump sum for legal now, and then you can take it back to the board and see if that's uh, suffice for y'all. I, I think I'd be if, back. If that's, I'll How would you break out legal and just one lump sum legal, 10000 I mean, There's no way to break it Just another line of contract. contract. Professional services. Professional services. That would be that would be that, with the explanation that that is more legal services. 
Yes. We'll include that in the, in the I'll motion. I'll be surprised that works. She came up with that figure from the previous page. <laughs> we just transferred it to this page. Right. <laughs> so I would think it needs a little more scrutiny than it looks like this. You know? Unless you want to give us some advice that I would be happy to accept. Um, yeah, I'm fine with yeah, I think we'll Thank go. With, I think we'll go with that amount. I got. I think. I think it's re a reasonable amount. Oh, for the public watching, this is Paula Seamster. She is the new director at the Board of Elections this year. Yeah. Thanks for so coming. Well, okay. Commissioner Pardo, your question about the $19,000 that was in capital, those are the HAVA funds that's going to be used for, I believe, security system. Okay. That were approved during the year. They were, they're were they not requested for next year. All right. Do we have any other questions? No. For these folks? Thank you, ladies. So is that what this board wants to do, is just go ahead and put a lump sum with their budget? Or you well, want to? Just put, yeah, just put that under. It's not like legal. Yeah, just legal. Yeah. Uh, the professional services in their line. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, your questions are still outstanding. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. All about the position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, we'll just have to get some information. We're agreed that we want to give them a lump of the Right. Yeah, there you go. If you want more, let us well, know. Well, Pat said there's some limitations on that. So. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. But it's got to be dispersed to pour the oil. Yeah. Okay. All right. Register deeds. And then behind uh, Ben's is the uh, Register deeds automation and preservation. I will say this. On his line item budget, he might ought to teach a class. And I, <laughs> it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I mean... It was real good. You have to give Ben some props from that. He, he explained every detail. Of course, Ben's just detail-oriented, uh, but much more detail than other departments. It was real good. Well, it's very functional on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. IT. Engineering and public utilities. Uh, general question may not have the uh, ability to answer this, uh, but doing a lot of building maintenance and building construction, uh, my material costs are just going through the roof. Uh, are, are we close with what's being proposed here? Uh, as close as we were when we made the estimates early on, I I don't know now about okay. Well, that, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I suspect that I mean the sheet of plywood is four four times what it was six months ago. When running for the capital improvement items, we talked, and I think we had Cameron what percentage it was ten percent or something like that yeah. to all of your. Request knowing that. I may not be able to. But it's still coming cheap. Yeah. And I had a uh, comment too. Uh, first off, on, on Kevin's statement about Ben, also, I'll throw Derek or something too. He yeah, Derek, you too. He did a good job uh, on his notes in your budget. Uh, let me ask you this, Ronnie. Uh, go back to the old courthouse. That's that number that we got for the HVAC system. Uh, where would that come from? It came from the engineer um, that did the design work for that system. He did the estimate as well. That's just, yeah, it's just one estimate. Yeah, it's an engineer's estimate. That's not a contractor's exactly. uh, yes. bid. Is that the only person you can get estimates from? Uh, we did, uh, typically when they do design work for us like that, we do the same thing with Bill Lester. He does an estimate for the water and sewer, and we requested one as part of the design for the HVAC. So there's other HVAC contractors. Yes, he, can yeah, so uh, if the board decided they wanted to move forward with that, then we would get the estimate. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. But there's somebody who did to evaluate that facility. Got a lot of requests in from the department. 
I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. We've got a lot of requests in as far as expenses. Um, is this just a matter of letting us know what's needed, or is it? Um, this is what I talked to you about, about all the different, uh, you talking about the. Yeah, 6.9 or 6.3. Yeah, 6.3, and I mean, you cut it down to 3.9. I mean, it's. <clears throat> so you talk, it's, you're talking about the capital, the amount. capital yeah. in public buildings. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's. Yes. Okay. I believe so. That's all the capital stuff that went over the capital improvement plan. Is that correct? Right? So there were a lot of stuff they requested that we cut out. Yeah. He requested all of it in year one, and we're not funded fun all of it either in year one or at all. So. And some of those uh, requests are from other departments, and they felt like they were priorities for them. And that's why, since they're maintenance or building items, they got all of them. Yes. All right, non departmental. Thank you, Brad. Am I done? Right. done now. Okay. Yep. Good percentage in each other. Emergency medical services, and in that emergency medical, there's fire marshal behind that, and emergency management behind that, and 911 communications, and emergency service administration, and medical examiner. No way to really budget for that. I have to be all over. I think it was three years ago the state had a backlog of mm -hmm. cases and they, that finally looks like starting to catch up a little bit. Sheriff. And behind the sheriff is the jail and animal patrol. The only thing there is as far as expenses between sheriff's department and the jail. We've got an increase of about $1.5 million in expenditure. Yeah, I know that the health insurance is a huge chunk of that. Health insurance is, health insurance is a lot of that. It's forcing the salaries for the, the, the retirement. Officers. The raise, yeah, it's got the four detention officers. It's got retirement. It's going up. Um, I looked at that, too. Yeah, the, the, that's one because of just the number of staff. The health insurance is pretty big. Let's see. I guess some of the things I see in the line item budget deal with some inmate expenses. And I know over the past, the whole team, uh, over the past year, there's been a conscious effort to keep as few folks in the jail as possible due to COVID. I know they've started opening the courts back up and started doing some cases. Are we seeing... Uh, more confinements? Uh, are we hearing anything now that more folks are vaccinated? Are, are we getting back to normal? And, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what normal is uh, right now, Mr. Berger, but uh, uh, in, this, in answer to your question is we had, we had a shutdown on the prisoner transfers from Department of Corrections on the misdemeanor confinement program, uh, which did bring some revenue source here. Um, I, I'll let Shane speak to that, but, uh, but basically when the COVID situation happened, there was, there was limited transfers of inmates. We did see a reduction of, of, of inmates in the jail facility. Now we're starting to see some of those numbers come back up, and Shane can speak to that specifically. Yeah, the, the numbers are starting to level off again. Um, we're averaging about 184, to about 188 per week, uh, give or take. What were you averaging pre-COVID? Uh, to... 15. Okay. But now that, that included uh, state misdemeanor confinement inmates that were coming where we were generating revenue from that. Once COVID hit, they've opened up two other prison, older prison facilities and started shipping people there when the jails and stuff got back wild. So are they looking at, is there any indication that they're going to start utilizing the, uh, 
that program again where you're starting to take folks? That they still have it. Our numbers have dropped um, drastically for that. Um, we we may have five male and females right now. It's just we're, we're, they're not getting them throughout the state as much as they were. And I saw an increase in the security cost at the courthouse. I'm not sure which one of you would um, said it was the first increase in the past four years or so. Yes, private security. Yes, uh, yes. And, and they looked at going up uh, last year, but with the COVID hit, they didn't. Okay. And it just fit us at one time. And are they they still the most dependable, cost efficient? Yes. Firm out. Okay. Yes. With uh, regards to the four officers, um, it looks like and we've eliminated the the two from the inmate litter program. Is that right? Yes. So it's it's, um, it's how, they, how is that working out? What they'll do is they'll they'll net two. So they. That's what I want to be sure to hear. And that's what I was when I mean, you mentioned that the other day in the meeting. I was told we addressed that in the budget process. So if we continue down this path, they would net two. But it would be. Uh, on the general line of it's going to impact us a little bit more because, because of the, yes sir the landfill that's exactly right. so right. although it's it's just two individuals the impact on our general budgets is going to be significantly three and a half yeah something i mean to be more because we pay just a percentage of their salaries out of the general budget now we'll pay all of them yes. yeah there was a request for a gps tracking system uh, to deal with Look like small items uh, that trying to locate them when they're stolen. Uh, is that something that uh, that, that money went through the detective division on tracking system? Yes, it was. Yeah. Any work trackers? Yes, ma'am. We were told to find money in the current budget, so that's okay. What we're doing. So you're going to get those? Is that right? Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. The only note just said yeah, that was cut. It didn't say. That purchase it this year. Right. Yeah, that's, that's part of what we do when we meet with all of them is try to figure out what can they get this year because if they have short balls this year especially because of COVID, a lot of stuff didn't get done. So, yeah. Kind of. mm -hmm. that's Any other questions for me? Thank you all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Do they have anything for us? Do it. Do you have anything for us? I said, did you have anything for us? Um, no, not this time, I think. Uh, if, if any other question or anything like this, just please get it to me and we'll we'll respond. But Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Be safe. Thank, Thank you, sir. Sir. Mr. Metzler, I, I do have a request. Uh, a couple of years ago, you got uh, a, a comparison mm -hmm. with half a dozen or more counties, sheriff's department. And I remember it distinctly because it was difficult to compare our sheriff's department budget wise with other because uh, they. They did their math differently. They had to pull some things. Some included the jail in, in, in their total figures. Anyhow, uh, I thought the comparison was useful because it did give us the number of officers that we had and gave us a comparison with how many cases that were being dealt with, if you remember. Yeah, so I would be back. interested in seeing that at your convenience sometime. Just the jail or the sheriff's department? No, the sheriff's department. Okay. Yeah, some, you, of, some, of them, some of them came as a package. So, yeah. Some of that's the UCR data, I think, that, that we can track. It looks like COVID slowed that down quite a bit. But last I saw it, that was 2018 or 17. We can, we'll pull it for sure. Yeah, I'm just trying to get an idea about how effective we are in closing cases with how many people and how many vehicles. Well, you're, you're talking about like investigative cases? The whole package. Okay, okay. well, I will say one thing. I think we're very effective. I want to make a statement, but uh, yes, we'll provide that information. Yeah. Well, we're, we're really relying on, we know what you're doing, but we're relying on the other candidates to give us a reasonable comparison point. Sure. And I, I'm just, I just found it difficult to deal with because they didn't do the math exactly the same way. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, Amber Shelton? I got a question about the generator purchase. Yes. The generator purchase is pretty much to maintain the heat and air system. 
well, everything. We've got a, a, a sewer line of, of pump station that's attached to it. So once the power goes off. So you're going to need uh, such a big generator, or, or are you trying to run the whole facility? We we'll run the whole facility for the animals. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I understand. We've had that discussion. We've had that discussion. Okay, thank you. Probably we can build an annex on it so we can move yeah. there. Yeah, build an annex. <laughs> Inspections? Yeah, I had a question about inspections. Okay. Uh, how are we now staffing level of inspection? We're good on the building inspection side. We have four building inspectors uh, downstairs there. Um, I think the new ones are all getting trained up. I think we're doing pretty well in the building. And, and my question is, is it surrounds or, or because I know we talked about the amount of work load that's increased with the building inspections and uh, in the uh, Doing the um, with other group, we, we the other group we partnered with uh, uh, septic tanks and environmental health. Environmental health yeah, <laughs> and we've been, we've been, you've uh, recommended an additional person in environmental health because of the workload, but you didn't in inspections because of the uptick. We used to only have two, and now we've got four. No, I, I, I'm just yeah, saying. I mean, you know, I couldn't help but notice that there's an 87 percent impact. And both of those, I would say that the inspectors make more site visits than environmental services, right? Yeah. And uh, so. Or equal amount, of, I say. They, they didn't put in for a request this year. I, that point taken out. So, uh, I just wondered. I just, you know. We added one so last year. Yeah, yeah. We, we did one last yeah. year when we did the. We uh, probably should have done the environmental health person last year, too. They're, they're, you, you may have just said it, but I. I I, I want to be sure we heard it. That we do have the we're fully staffed as far as inspectors, but they're not fully trained and licensed yet. The only one that's fully trained is at a three is a more language. The and other we, ones are working aggressively well. They're working towards it. Do we have a time frame for when we anticipate that happening? The end of this year? End of December? Some of some of those requirements are even time bound from what I understand, like you have to be a level two for a certain number of certain periods of time. Um, that's going to be a major focus this next year. We need to have inspectors that are uh, more than just entry level or a level one. Uh, we need to have some that are through there. And the board's already supported that by having to pay for uh, certification. So, are, there, so are, they, are they progressing at the rate that they should? Is, is that the question? That's my question. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, I would, uh, I'd like to see progressing more, um, but yeah, that's something that's gonna be a big effort this next year. I haven't heard that that, that was a problem. I just, I just wanna hear, I yeah, Mr. Travis, hang, hang on one second. What you doing? No, go, go ahead. Well, one question I have is, uh, I hear from contractors more and more, I can't wait till you, they can get online, request a permit, pay for the permit, Get somebody out there to do it. They don't have to make a county visit. How close are we to getting that permission? Are you track it? <laughs> That's why I stay. <laughs> Welcome back, man. <laughs> Computers. Well, I mean, it's going to be a great thing. Once so this is, a, this is a good. This is good. Um, so. Track it. E track it is what you're talking about. So as of this week, we are going to start in, phasing in contractors on using e track it, with one exception and that is the integration with PayMenace, which is our credit card processor. We will be able to make those payments across the phone, uh, but we'll not, the contractor will not be able to make it in the Samsung. Where we are with that is this morning, my staff's been texting me back and forth about testing that out. I would say we're still a month away of getting the credit card payment tested out and fully functional. But as far as a contractor, we are ready. We have a station set up downstairs for people to sign up and we walk them through the sign up and then kind of do them a brief training and actually talk to Charlie at the end of last week. We're ready to start that this week. So as far as me as a civilian need a permit for a deck, how close, on, how far away are we doing that? It would be the same process. We are going to focus on contractors because they are the ones that are calling in and, and focusing more the most. But if a citizen comes in and wants to do the process, they're welcome to do so. Yes, yeah, so as we get that done, Contractors love this and it, in phase one of that, they will be able to schedule their inspections. They will be able to print their permits. They'll be able to see the status live from the field 
of the status of their inspection. Yes, it will. They will know in the system what day the inspector will come out, and then once the inspector completes the inspection and does the update in the field, they will get a notification if they choose that it's that they can log in and check the status. We will be able to track that in the system. Yes. All right, Derek, I heard you say that there's a computer downstairs. Mm -hmm. Now, will contractors who don't live in the county, will they be able to do the, sign up over the Internet? Yes. Very good. Yep. Um, it, once we publicize it, you could go up. Uh, there will be instructions out there, but it's as simple as go in and act like you forgot your password, and it allows you to create a new account. I assume we're going to run a few weeks without adding it just to see how it goes? That's correct. We would like to get some contractors that come in frequently and test it out and make sure that we, we are comfortable with it, and then we will publicize it on the website. We actually have the page already built out. We just haven't made it public. I know a contractor will be interested. <laughs> we will dare volunteers. <laughs> Thank you so much, Derek. Because well, I know this has been in the works for at least nine years now. Okay. <laughs> so finally, finally getting done. Thank you, Kevin. Right, Kevin. Right. I don't know that, Derek. As far as review officers, we've got somebody 40 hours a week. We do. Okay. And we've got county staff training to take over at some point as far as so we've got somebody on staff all the time. We've got, we, we're contracted out with UTRC to have a staff person here 40 hours, right? Correct. Well, I'm talking about in the future. I mean, that goes, we'll hire somebody. We're going to have to hire somebody. And that's right. what I, I don't know if now is the proper time to ask about it, but we had, you and I talked about the position, the person that goes in that senior position, planning position, has to be somebody that's customer-oriented, plus knows what the heck they're doing with the growth that we're having. So I talked to Charlie about finding a, I know some don't like the headhunter word, but I think it's pretty crucial that we get the right person in here. And I think paying, you know, a little bit of money right now up front will benefit benefit us in the in the end. Yeah, a couple of people that I've spoken to and respect uh, have suggested that in this case that it would be money well spent. Planners are, are extremely hard to find right now. Every county is just stealing them from each other. So those, the group that's hired for forty hours a week, they've already started. Yeah, those teams. And. That would be any plant review, any variance, any everything. And if, if if for some reason that he couldn't do it here, PTRC's got their staff and who else? So the, the, our contract is to have a person here, forty hours a week. He can the person can do most everything. But if there's something that they can't do, there's a group out of Greensboro called State Code Enforcement that has very experienced planners and other people on it. And also we have the staff from PTRC that all chip in on these hard big items, major subdivisions, things now, like that. Have they been educated on what we're looking for as far as finding solutions and not being a typical planner? I have not personally spoken to them. I know what your point is, and I'll, I'll, if not, I will convey that to Mr. Day to let him know based on our conversations in the past. And I just want to make sure that they are fully available. I know of had an attorney approach me about a church trying to schedule a variance request and being told that there was nothing available so that they backed up and gone another route and told me that if they needed me to say anything or as digging into it, they'd let me know if the other route didn't work. Was that recently? Mm -hmm. Um, well, if you'll get with us afterwards, let us know. Yeah, well, right now they're going the easement route instead of a variance route for a cemetery. So, okay. I mean, it's just getting just terminology. Um, so, yeah, as we go through this process, we, we don't want to slow anything up. So, right. if anything happens, uh, let's make sure that we know that. Mm -hmm. Environmental health is fully staffed right now. I know, but I'm talking about the ordinance regulations and stuff they have. They, they enforce their own regulations over there. Uh, so are you saying you need this body to move, give you direction to move forward with the search 
Yeah, that would be place. great as long as, yeah, that would be great. Well, I can change the I mean, well, I think there's a couple of things. I've got got Obviously, I want to make sure that we get a great fit. But also, we have a, a couple of projects that is uh, uh, in the hopper that, uh, you know, the sooner we get a very qualified fit, the better we are. And so if at some point in time, we need to start that process. And I just don't think it would be advantageous to get this can down the road. So I would, I would certainly think... Make a motion if that's what's needed to start the process. For yeah, that'd be great. I'll second. All right, so we have a motion and a second, Ms. Clerk, that, that we do what? That we hire a headhunter agency or right. that we direct uh, the county administration yeah. to hire a headhunter agency got to fill this position. Do we share any information on the quotes or do we need to put limitations on it in any way? No, I, just, I, I recommend not to exceed 20000 because that's where they're coming in right now. Yeah. I just want to make sure we know. Well, that's what I want to clarify. But well, we're not exceeding we're 20. We're him to take appropriate action, including hiring a headhunter up to 25. I just say give me the flexibility. Yeah, I, would, I would amend my motion to that. But does the PRC do it to provide this service? Or the... That, we'd want somebody that's... Yeah, definitely. Special We've already yeah. talked to them, and they, I mean, they're looking for us, but it's not a professional go talk to other planners to make sure they come and locate here. All right. That'd be my motion. A minute. A second. A all right. So we're all good. Everybody's clear on the motion. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right. You've got that clear direction. I, and I do have a question that's a follow-on. Wait until that motion. Uh, at one time we talked about growing our own. Do you remember? And we were going to coordinate uh, specifically uh, with the president of RCC about growing up. Now, we were primarily interested in inspectors at that time, uh, but it seemed like planners might fall into the same category. Uh, to my knowledge, there's been, we've had no results from that. Planners are typically, I speak from experience, planners are typically a four year, four year degree. Yeah. Uh, it's the degree I have, of course, I forgot. Planning a long time ago, but it's the degree I have. I'll say we have a fill in. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will add one put And managers are a dime a dozen, right? Uh, <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> and I have they used, used to be. They used to be, that's right. And I have to turn to the fence. The, our fellow, the, I think y'all are aware, Nina, will be leaving and we just interviewed. Uh, Back there, in <laughs> and uh, <laughs> our fellowship ends, and the new fellow that we're going to offer to has a planning degree, um, and seems very bright. So I think I know his first project. Might be a follow-on employment. <laughs> Airport. All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got code enforcement and central permit. Oh yeah. That's anything in code enforcement or central permitting. How how was central permitting? I guess I guess one of the questions that I have is, you know, I know last year we hired an admin in, in planning, who ended up kind of being the director over the central permitting. So we kind of made a little bit of a change mid year. Uh, how, how is that working? I, I think it's working fantastic. Yeah. Um, it was difficult when you had obviously when you had. Some that answer to one person, some answer to others. It works very efficiently. They're all answering to one person. Seems like they're getting along very well, working well together. I've had very little complaints on, from from contractors. So, no news is, is good news when you're. So, so this is kind. Of, this is kind of leveling off now in central permitting. It is the challenge of central permitting. Just full transparency is that I mean it's a. I want to say it's an entry level job, but it's a it's a job. Tough job. It's a tough job, and it's a job that requires a lot of training, um, and it's not a high skilled pay job. And so, um, I think our new structure and, and Stacy's done a fantastic job down there, keeping everybody. I, I've talked to the staff down there; they're happy. Uh, but it is just going to be one that we have to closely monitor because they are very valuable employees. I'm just one of the things I'll say, Mr. Chairman. Is when we're going through this change, I've shared with you before, we're bringing in new personnel. Uh, if there's any organizational issues that need to be addressed, um, changes, 
that kind of, I would suggest that you do it before we bring somebody in and to ensure that, that, that whoever is selected is given the best opportunity to be successful in their new endeavor. Yeah. And, and we looked at hiring, potentially hiring a planner, but we thought, well, we're going to hire somebody in a senior position, let he or she hire that individual, not us. So Build, build their team. Okay. Airport. Good. Economic development, tourism. Uh, I have a quick question. All right. Tourism. Uh, what was the effect of COVID with uh, hotels and motels? I, I don't know the answer offhand, but I can find out. I'm sure it was pretty impactful. Uh, yeah. yeah, we had, we, but yeah, yeah. I just I haven't heard. I just wanted to let them know we are thinking about it. It is a good question. Seventy-three out of public safety. Tab twenty-five. The so amount. We had a large increase. Forest service forty percent county share contribution. Previously we budgeted in the sixties. Now you budgeted ninety thousand four hundred dollars. We went. We've gone back and forth with them. It's a truck. Um, they have a truck that needs to be replaced. It's one that hauls. A large amount of water, um, and so they're going to rotate down the existing truck, which has got, if I remember right, a little over 100,000 miles. Which is this will go down next year. The, yeah, this is a one, it's a one year thing. We've been in touch with the district forester. Uh, is the water to put out fires or? Yeah, like it's a water truck, yeah, like a fire, a fire brush truck. Yeah, okay. So we buy them trucks. We pay. So their old truck, what are we going to do with that old truck? We don't own any of that. It's uh, we, we just get to pay forty percent of the cost of that forestry program and have it have it here in the state. That's six right. So we count that as in kind of, and that's their people. Fair enough. Yeah. Anything else? Anything? I'm glad you found the time. Oh, that's the, yeah, uh, I think that in Kevin, you understand, they, they cover different counties. They ain't just right. here. Oh, I know. So I, know. I don't know what the other counties give them for a vehicle, because I'm pretty sure we probably go to all, all the counties to ask for a vehicle. Robert, extension. Mm -hmm. I guess okay. Craig's point on that is whether or not there's are we paying for part of it? We're paying for all of it. No, that's, we're not paying for the whole truck. We're not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm on. Integrated health again. Uh, this real quick, they cut off extension. I'd like to get an update on what they're doing. I, I haven't heard from them in a while. They had done it last year. They haven't done a whole lot because they had not even now. Can't update. I mean, if they ain't doing nothing, why are we paying for it? You'll pay 100%. Um, integrative Health, again, this is the last year we've got the, uh, the funding through KBR. And so that's, that's, we have to think this year we might need to get the, I uh, guess, measurements of what we've done for the past several years from Felissa's group to, to find out that's something you all want to continue in the future. When are we going to? Start looking at making that decision with budgeting next year. Well, we need to look at it sooner than that. I gave Felicia kind of the indication that we're going to start pulling that data together to okay. find out what impact we're making. Because huge, I would recommend doing it if it's not corporate. I think it is for huge. So, so we'll, we'll look into that this fall, late late summer fall. Public health under 34 or 33. Hey, I just want to real quick want to 
give a shout out to Trey. I think they did actually, well, everybody in the county did out there in the COVID thing over at RCC. Uh, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, was there, Trey did that. He was there all, all the time. I think he did a good job. There was a lot of people. In a lot of people involved. I mean, from Tina Massey on, I mean, there's a lot of people on the Anything in public yeah. health that you want to go over? Well, I've got to just talk about pharmacy. I'm sure employees know they can get prescriptions from their pharmacy while they're at work. You ain't got to go somewhere. Well, still, you shouldn't abandon your local pharmacists. If you think about it, if everybody did that, if all county city employees didn't utilize the local pharmacy, they'd about come around 2,000 customers. Well, the other thing is, if, if we do utilize the local pharmacy and the reimbursements are as bad as we understand, uh, we're, we're going to cost we're, we're going to cost the county even more money. Yeah, I, I love <laughs> so what, the, what the problem is there. Uh, mental health. Speaking of. That's our contribution to uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. MOE. We're still in competition with these stuff. Right. Social services. Uh, I, I got a question for Felicia. Felicia. Anybody like to hear Felicia talk? Yeah. Felicia, uh, I just want to know an update about this foster care program. Uh, you're losing money. But we're continuing to get more and more foster care, so I don't know the solution. So you are talking about the Family First Prevention Services Act. Well, great question. Um, we continue to get a trickle of information coming in from the state. Um, so at this point, what we've tried to do is look at our overall services and kind of predict what we think is going to be our revenues for that. In the same token, Lance and I have been meeting with Cardinal on the um, MOU for a specific foster care program. It's the foster care reinvestment um, services. And we actually had a meeting with that last week to go over that MOU. A couple of little minor changes that we had to make in that, but we want to take those funds and try to use those to help promote and support our foster youth. Are we uh, advertising or putting out there for foster care parents? Because I know that we've yes. had a big uptick this past year. Yeah, so actually um, I approved a little little card that we're going to be um, giving out to agencies. We're going to be asking some of our community partners to put in a little card, like if you go and pick up medication or if you get a pizza, things like that so that we're getting that information out there. I've got two new licensing workers who have wonderful ideas. I actually met with them last week. We are talking about um, going to different festivals, um, getting information out there to do massive improvement. And I actually gave them a, a pretty healthy goal of the number of foster parents I'd like to see here locally. Great, I, I wish we had more foster care, but uh, last question, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for all the investigation, how's it going? I haven't had an update on that in a while. Right now, a lot of your fraud um, stuff is, though we're getting those referrals and we're processing some of that, a lot of your collections are kind of on hold with certain programs because of the pandemic. I heard we have a big backlog of investigations that need to happen. We have, we're down a worker again. So we hired a, a person. They came on. We trained them. They were, you know, we had a great team. And this person got a better opportunity. And so, yes, that has caused us to be delayed in some of our processing. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I do. Uh, hang on one second. I was just trying to find which department it was in. But it looked like there were several vehicle uh, things that uh, PCM program is going to be funded by Partnership for Community Care. Is that, Are you talking about public health? Yeah, yeah public health. Yeah, I think that's what that is. But have they changed, changed name, gone kaput? What, what, in looking them up, it looks like there's kind of been some shakeup there. 
for partnership for community care. Yeah. So we have a transition going on with Medicaid that has caused some of our processes that are going to be changing, and we've had some program changes at public health. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm saying, it looked like it was, uh, was it North Carolina Community Care Networks mm -hmm. has assumed the Medicaid primary care case management responsibilities previously held by the partnership for community care. So is that who's going to be taking care of some of these things? Um, like I said, in looking at it, it just said, uh, let me pull it up. I apologize for being slow on this. Yeah, that's fine. For example, vehicle insurance costs for four vehicles assigned to the pregnancy care management program okay. at $410. The program is funded by the Partnership for Community Care. But in you're looking up Partnership for Community Care, it looks like they're out of business. So there's been a transition. What, what you're seeing there is they're not exactly out of business. You're seeing a transition in the programs and what they're doing because of the upcoming Medicaid transformation. Okay. Um, and if you would like, I do not have a problem. I can go ahead and have Trey give you kind of a, a couple of paragraphs of what we're doing internally with that particular area because he's been having meetings with the supervisor of the, the group that we have at, our, at the local public health department of what that's going to, how that's going to impact us as we go into Medicaid so transformation. I we, yeah, I know we've all been hearing some of these transformations, and, and to be honest, it, it just confuses me. But yeah, if he, if he could do something short and concise, just get it to our clerk, she'll sure. disseminate it to us. I Not a problem, it. we can do that. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right. Veteran Services. Other human services, and I would point out that we had a request from Genesis Ministries for ten thousand, and we put in um, three thousand for that simply because. In the past, we helped with um, the REMSCO and the redirections of Rockingham County. And this is a uh, look like some kind of grant, then. It's just a no. It's just a, a one-time contribution for for them. They'd ask for ten thousand. I, I mean, they do a great job in the communities. What, what they've done is, um, you know, it was all all female facility. Now they they're expanding to include men. And they're just asking for a little help to help to progress that, that to the men program too. So they're doing an excellent program. How do we determine what nonprofits we fund? Well, I can tell you in the past we've done it on a case by case back basis, yeah. but but we had uh, we had deferred many requests, and this is the first one I've heard about in the last year or two. Yeah, the only reason that you know we had funded Rimsco in the past, they provide a similar service that uh, Genesis Ministry, but we they don't facilitate know. what we would be doing anyhow. Is that correct or not? So I mean, what a church should be doing, not the government. Well, this is a uh, well, it's helped the individual. Yeah, it's it's the rehab of the uh, of people with domestic violence that are in domestic violence that are also substance abuse. It's a good organization, but I know not. Well, I, 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 I like uh, Commissioner Bird's point there. I, I don't want to get back to where we were having to vote on two or three requests from totally worthwhile charities. Uh, yeah, and I'm just trying to figure out, you know, is this the only request we had this year? How did it get into the budget? You know, I'm not saying it's not a legit or a, um, a very good organization. It's just there's a lot of good organizations. Where where does the government draw the line as far as donating other people's money to not bribes? So. Point well taken. I think we got any other question that I can recall. Not right. Let you all hear. Okay. These okay. services we will have. I think I, uh, you've got uh, our earlier discussions. I think you've got some 
Yes. I'm sitting here looking at your line. I see it. Uh, reviewing in. I'm reviewing. There again, it's just a lot. We've had this conversation. And although it is a, uh, I appreciate what's been done. If I look at the, uh, the line item, essentially it's a, it's a program that has grown and, and even with the, the, what's been done to date, you're still, uh, $36,000 from the actual in 19 and 20. Yep. 11% reduction. And that's... 10%. We need a chance to look at that again. Okay. Library? Once we do have uh, the, the uh, Daymark building retrofitted for youth service child support, we're going to try to make some moves as we've discussed with the administration. I think that might come up, so I just want to jump ahead of that. Well, uh, I think now would be good for a Yoda club. <laughs> okay. Other culture, and again, this is, as, as Mr. Berger had asked, how do we pick it? It's just a in the past, been case by case, it does have the twenty-eight thousand uh, dollar expenditure for the pay channel in there. That's for the college. No, that's for the college. What? What? So the the college has a pay channel as well. And they're still paying for? Well, we get revenue for it as well. So we pass through. through. Pass through. It's a pass through, right? Okay. okay. Got a revenue side. Aging, disability, and transit. Those funds just pass through, pass through the flow. Yeah. Uh, public schools. Is that include RCC behind the public schools? Transfer in and out. This shows you that your your water and sewer fund, and unfortunately, has gone down quite a bit. Not enough. I don't like to see zero, but anyway, it's gone down quite a bit. Then behind that is the contingency. Anything there? No, that's just your projects that we talked about earlier. Really that transfer to the general fund will change. Uh, as we leave. So there's several on that if you want to take a moment to look at or what you feel about the different reserve funds. So, is that the part that's under other funds expenditures in your the budget you emailed to us? When do yes. we get to that? Yes, that's right now. That's, yeah. So, this comes out of the general fund and the other funds. So you've got a department request for $1.1 million, and your note says you'll take it to us during the current fiscal year. Which funds? Uh, it's on page 47 of what you emailed. Um, 47 under other funds expenditures. Talks about the gas well project. Oh, it's the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Rainfield gas. Well, I believe has that already been approved? Yeah, that already approved. Okay, that's yeah. not a new thing. That's mm -hmm. okay. No, no, that was the, the big uh, gas right, well that's an old note then, because it will be taken. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah these notes go back Sorry. in March. Yeah, yeah, this <laughs> just, back in March, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything to point out, Pat, on the reserves that you can think of? No, I just wanted to talk about everything because we have to deal with schools and things. We don't have any change on the fire district, right? No, sir. I guess something else that's under there, and we did talk about it a little bit earlier, but I'm just make sure I wrap my hands around it, uh, capital reserve transfer out, and it may be located somewhere else as well, but 
Are we talking about self five construction and set aside for the bulldozer? Yes. It wasn't under this part, which is page 48. It's not requested that it's budgeted. It's under, if you're looking at the, the first one that we submitted, it's on page 102 of that book right there. Okay. All right. I need to talk about it earlier today, but then... So yeah. this is new. This is something uh, we're going to push the department in their request to be setting stuff aside. It's part of creating that fund. Uh, that was all happening at the same time as the budget process. So that's me adding that in there saying we need to start saving for these projects. And again, water and sewer has worked out fine. We're looking with the Myron Link now. We've contacted that with the service out, and they're doing a great job for us. So we have we have employees, right? No, we have no. We have a portion of several employees in water and sewer just because they still deal with the billing and. But as far as the staff itself and environment, like we contract that portion totally out. Right, the employees that we had in that department, they're transferred to maintenance, or where we had they? one that we didn't fill, and we had one that transferred for somebody who retired in maintenance, so okay. we didn't have to terminate anybody. We just backfilled that position. Yes. And instead of paying it on the enterprise fund, we pay the salary. Tourism. Tourism. Yeah. On page 62 of the email document. It says advertising with brochures and hash. Are we really getting any bang for our buck out of hash? I can find that. That's a good <laughs> question. Okay. And then what is Blue Way branding, which is on page 63? Page 60 what? 63 special projects, blue wave brand, $30,000. I think that's advertising our stream complex. It's the waterways. I know it's the waterways. Um, Rocky rivers County and rivers and streams. Okay. That's just a lump sum for all that advertising. For, okay. I'll find out advertising in Asheville, see if it kind of yeah, I know they really like to come here, so we can. Well, the interesting thing on that note, it's got RDU, Charlotte, and instead of Greensboro Airport, it's got the Asheville Airport. So that's why it kind of just stuck out. Yeah, and we've done some advertising in Greensboro. I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I'll, I'll find out what bank we get for that. But. Uh, and that's, that's all I've got. <laughs> um, one thing that I, that I, I asked Pat during the break that I very much appreciate, Mr. Chair, uh, is that I think it's important that, that she related a comment a couple of meetings back when we were talking about this meeting and we was discussing, uh, she gave us a document talking about what her preliminary plans were for the budget the cost. And one of the things that stuck in my in my mind's eye was and my colleague Commissioner Travis talked about the benefits and we talked about doing the raises for our employees through the performance based plan. But share again what you shared with us about how much more it's gonna cost us this year with this our labor cost. It's going to be next year compared to this year with the same number of employees. So the, the total of everything that I'll go through exactly what's in here is going to be um, right about $3.3 .3 million in increased cost. Now that and that's includes, before we do any raise. Well, no, that's okay. So uh, that does include, that amount does include the one-third study and the raise. All right, so if we talk about those two out. Okay, so if we just do retirement and insurance alone, that's two... Um, yeah, two million two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Two point a little over two point three million dollars. I should say two point five. It's two point five million dollars retirement insurance alone. And that's just to cover the, the number of employees we have right now for next year. That's without an doing anything. Increase. That's increase. That's right. that's increase. Increase. Without doing anything. Without Correct. doing uh, nothing. Correct. And I think that's just important for the folks to know. Is that when we sit here and we, we, we go and I know it might sound like we're doing line item by line item, but we're asking the tough questions because when we start doing our budget process, that means we start out with the $2.5 million in the hole that we have to 
we have to look at and consider when we start making obligations for uh, what we're going to do next year. And that's a big number. That's a little over three pennies of your, I mean, of your uh, at the law, of your property tax. And the each, each penny brings in what seven? We said we projected seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So if you do the math, that's going to be about three pennies. So it sounds like that that one-third study is going to cost us about eight hundred thousand. Well, it's about four or something. It's four about four hundred. Yeah. And then the merit um, the program is about four hundred fifty-five thousand. Okay, so the coal. merit and the one-third and the bonus will be about eight hundred. Okay. What's that coal? Was it was a coal. No, it's not coal this year. Okay. I just and you probably saw from last year because I saw okay. some verbiage in there. Yeah. Okay, and so I just share that because I think it's important that when we sit here talking about what we're going to have to do to mitigate the cost to the insurance, that's on top. Of, that's that's on top of that. I mean, it's you know that's that gets it back up by the time you do the insurance mitigation and the uh, cost of living. Now we're at three point five. So it's just a, a fun fact to know. I wonder what employees would want to rather have, a merit raise or well we want our insurance increase. Well depends on if you ask the ones that doesn't have a doesn't have to provide it for the families that want to. It's 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 a catch twenty two. It's a catch twenty two. But I, I do want like I said, I appreciate you grabbing that information for us because that is a very pertinent pack fact. When we sit there having these discussions, and it's not unique to us. And keep in mind that that 2.3 million dollars has nothing to do with any of the decisions we made over the course of this year. This is just uh, the, the the state levying on our retirement system, how much we have to contribute for each employee, and it's a little bit more if they are sworn law enforcement officers. It's, uh, it's supposed to go up the index. Oh, it's next going. Year. It's not going to slip down. Right, Commissioner Berger, you've got a couple of questions? A couple of things. I know we've budgeted a lot of different departments for conferences. Is there any indication they're going to start back in the in-person conferences? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then I know we got some printouts this morning. We've covered the shared savings. I know there's also the forfeiture fund. Any of those funds that ultimately come to us for approval as far as expenditure? I think we ought to see what's in those funds. Um, okay, like you're talking about the amount or the yeah, balance. balance? Yeah, the balance okay. in, in any of those funds. I'm think, and, you know, also those COVID funds, anything we've got there as far as a separate breakdown. Um, and then I'd like to see a chart. Our rate is 69 and a half. I'd like to see a chart that shows how much that 69 and a half goes to each department. How much is to education? So our education tax is blank. How and much you is to a chart that has like two hundred little? I mean, you need to be you're talking about. I do a list. I don't care how general, you do. General education. Uh, I'm talking register of deeds, tax department for the fee, for you the gonna have department. that pie chart. It's gonna have like it don't have to be a pie. It can just be a list. Okay, gotcha. It, it can just be a list. So, uh, you know, how much is gotcha. each one? No problem. Making up that sixty nine and a half. We do that at the with that thing we send out the tax bills. We do it at a higher clump. You know, we have a different, but we can definitely do it by that. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Well, gentlemen, I'm going to propose we take a recess for about five minutes, oh, yes. and uh, then we'll get back and we'll take the next item up. Right. Yes. Guys, we're back in the session. We'll go to our next item, Mr. Manager. Kathleen through the plan. I asked Paul if he would prepare himself to discuss this with you also. Yeah, so uh, we've discussed the capital improvement plan uh, with the board, I believe it was a couple of months ago, uh, just to give an overview. And uh, I wanted to cover it again, just uh, as I mentioned earlier, to request the board consider approval with the, with the budget process this year. Um, so, you should have in front of you, there's three different capital improvement plans. The first is for general capital projects. Um, and I'll really just highlight what has changed from what you've seen before. Uh, based on our meetings, on the left-hand side, you'll notice that the projects, some of them are bold and some of them aren't. The bold signifies things that are new that we haven't had before, whereas the not bold are replacements or, um, you know, fixing things we already have. Um, 
as we talked about, it's roughly two and a half million dollars is what the uh, CIP for this next year uh, is requested at. That would change after you take the 625 out uh, of the general fund, uh, moving over to the capital reserve fund. But um, see year one, all the projects that we've discussed already. Um, debt service, these are pretty well fixed. Um, and uh, at the bottom, you'll see uh, the contributions that are the revenues for this capital improvement plan. So the goal of a CIP is that year one matches exactly what's in the budget document. So with the exception of the Workforce Development Center debt that hasn't been issued just yet, um, this lines up exactly with what you'll find in your, in your budget document. Um, again, it counts on five and a half cents going to capital every year. Um, so yeah, any any questions kind of on the overall uh, for general capital? Okay. Um, no, um, let me let me just comment real quick. One of the things we talked about is setting this up not only for programmatic capital but for facilities so that over 20, 25 years we, we can project and set money aside for things like roofs, parking lots, HVAC systems, um, so that there'll be money there and it won't impact the taxpayer unduly during any given year. Sure, absolutely. And, that, and that's part of what we've done. Yes, th so this covers the first five years, what Ronnie has worked on with his uh, improvement plan over 20 or so years is just trying to get a handle on um, you know what the when those things are coming up. Right. That, that's what I want to be sure. Since what we're talking about today is just showing five years, but uh, behind the scenes, he's also got that twenty-year plan that that'll sit there and help us in the future years. He does, and this only covers large capital items. So we may have other stuff that we're we're setting towards, but the cutoff for this, at least internally, is fifty thousand dollars, unless it's unique enough that it needs to be on here, which is. Fairly rare. Right. Okay. The facilities will coincide with this. Actually, have you set up that meeting yet? With the facilities committee? Okay, so we got meetings to, to go over that. We do. Yeah. So there may even be a future kind of how we do a set aside for IT infrastructure. There may be a, a set aside for you know future so facility repairs that has detail back behind it. Um, but it's a continual set aside. Right. Vehicles, vehicles, same way. We've got a, we're working right now on a multi year vehicle replacement plan. We do. I think a pretty good one for the first year, um, but we're putting one together for, I've got right now at least the next five years about what's going to be replaced, how it's going to move, that kind of thing. Tell me why there's nothing on here for schools. So the schools have their, they wouldn't fall under the general capital reserve fund. They have their own uh, reserve fund, and that's where that 4.1, I believe it is, million dollars that they have left over in their reserve is. Um, and I think that's part of what y'all were discussing earlier. Uh, we need to get with the schools to determine what projects do they have coming up, and what can fit with the debt affordability study that Congress has worked on. I bring it up. Uh, there was a line item, two million two hundred ninety-nine thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars, which is a fairly specific number set aside for future schools project, and that sounded like a capital investment. That's your lottery fund proceeds, I think. Well, that's the, the the reserve amount, so the amount of revenue they're bringing in, less the debt that's already existing, it's just a reserve for future school capital. We don't know what that need is yet. They'll yeah. just sit in the fund balance of that school capital reserve fund until they come with the need. Yeah, I thought that's what you were going to tell me. Uh, the reason I bring it up is uh, there had been an inquiry about a potential investor here in the county to build a bunch of houses for and they had a question about the strategic. You guys know something about it? Well, he was just trying to explain to him. If I, uh, I think you would, I, sorry. Well, I was just trying to find out if there was such a thing as a strategic building plan. I know what Sonja's doing over there, but as far as a replacement school. The schools have got one. I've seen one of their capital improvement plans. It's a long and very expensive um, plan. You remember seeing that it was a while back? I yeah. believe they just completed an update of that uh, January or February. It was presented in their meeting. Yeah, well, what I've seen, if you build a new uh, high school that serves 1,500, 2,000 people, it's going to cost $65 million if, if you do it like several other counties around us have done. Uh, 
uh, and it, it just seems like it's a void. And I thought capital improvements, uh, just to confirm, the capital improvement plan is not considered any sort of major investment like that. No, there's no schools uh, projects in here just yet. The funding is there, or the funding that is dedicated to it is there in a separate capital reserve, but I think that's where the conversations need to happen with the schools on what is their priority uh, moving forward. Because I know they have a, a ton of needs, but the needs far exceed the resources. So what is number one, number two, number three? Pat, did you say you were going to work with the schools to, with the, and um, Mitch on the... Right, and I have a draft plan now. He's doing some final modifications, very small stuff. But I ha we have the amounts that um, are affordable. Uh, I think the initial conversation that started this it's been a couple months ago was the need for a new elementary school, whether it's a new school or whether it's pods, and what can we afford? That's South so End, right? Yeah. So we yes. So we've done that based on what we thought a new school, and kind of come up with some various scenarios as far as can you do a new school? Can you do a new school plus maybe a lot of roof repairs and HVAC repairs? That's a lot of that that's on their list, and then also a scenario of okay overall total, what can you afford to issue in that? Um, so we have various scenarios that uh, we're ready uh, to some final modifications, like I said, on the, the actual draft document. Um, so we're ready with numbers when the school ha is ready with their plan of where their party needs are at. Well, I'm very concerned about the plan because there are various ways to meet the need and um, some plans are far less expensive than others. You answered my question. This doesn't include that conversation that you guys are on top of it. Elsewhere. Well, I will clarify that the plan that, that the portability study that I have done, that I've asked to be done, is on the restricted sources of revenues for schools, the lottery funding and the um, uh, restricted portion of the sales tax. The affordability study does not include any county contribution to that as far as tax rate or anything like that. So that would have to be a different conversation and updated plan if there's a need greater than they can afford. With their restricted money. Just to clarify so the payments on. By statute, county is responsible for Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So are there any questions on any particular projects that are that are in the general capital section of the CIP? Okay. Next up is landfill. Um, Landfill kind of has to operate like a rather than just a CIP, a whole fund plan because it doesn't have dedicated, its revenues cover everything, not as opposed to having like cents like the general capital. Um, so you can see there uh, what is proposed. Uh, probably the biggest item to, to keep an eye on on this uh, is the landfill fund balance at the bottom. You can see in the green, right above the green, where it says landfill fund balance, that's how much this plan appropriates in their fund balance. And the bottom is a best estimate of what that would do to their un unrestricted and uh, closure, post closure parts of their fund balance. Um, enterprise funds are, are very difficult to, to get that number exactly right. It can change dramatically. Um, so, I mean, me personally, I don't think I, I, fund balance needs to be there. Uh, at minimum where it is recommended on this to make sure that we have money in case there's some new state law that's passed, some uh, new accounting guideline that we have to follow. <coughs> During the past two years, between the gas well and the set aside that was required uh, a couple of years ago, that's like $3.2 million that we had to uh, do. It's not of our doing, it's a state or federal law change. Another unfunded mandate. Exactly. Yes. Uh, and I think that's all I keep getting worse. I assume the accordion in your figures so that the, the blue line matches the green line is uh, in the landfill fund balance. Correct. Okay, correct. Um, and important to point out on here too is that uh, this CIP counts on a dollar tip fee increase every year for the next four years. That's not to say that it has to be that way or anything, but that's what's built into this to keep that fund balance above the one and a half million medical fund balance. That's a moving target. That's a moving target. Well, I think y'all indicated, I mean, what I'm hearing today is a little bit different than what I heard before. Today I'm here and we're slowly peeling the band-aid off. As far as those uh, 
tax increase. What I heard before was we were doing a tax increase, a small one, and then see what we could do as far as operational to cut that figure down. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it just depends on the, the like, for instance, the posi shell. If it adds nine more years to the life of it, and you know, if we do the, like the the, the guy the consultant said, if we do certain things to to the equipment to keep it longer, I mean, it it could be fifty cents. It could be nothing. Oh. So certainly the goal. I think this is a. a, a I I know I feel comfortable that one dollar is at least what's needed, but I think if we are going to continue working hard so that we have years that it doesn't have to be that high. Well, just passing this state, we're by no way obligating this body to to increase yeah. the tipping field a dollar. This, this is, is going to be updated every year. So next year it may show, you can potentially see if we have a good year, it may show zero. Yeah. This is just a plan that has no legal ties on the board whatsoever. What's, what's legal is the budget. This is just trying to plan for what the budget's going to look like. Um, any questions about anything on, on that? Okay. And the final, <coughs> the final one on here is the water and sewer. Um, CIP, I imagine this one is one that's going to change quite a bit with the uh, uh, money coming in and one of those being what would be an allowable use being infrastructure, water and sewer infrastructure. Um, right now, you can see we're still not to the point where the water and sewer funds don't require transfer from the general fund, which is why that projects are recommended. How if we get grant money or other outside money? Certainly, we have a list of projects that we can go after. And if everything plays out the way this is laid out here, you can see in fiscal year 2026, 20, we will have broke even. Um, now, there's some pretty big assumptions in here. The, the Largest being this approved development revenues line that's at the bottom. These are developments that we know about that are big, and we we're doing our best estimate on when they're going to on their schedule of when they're going to build things out um, and sell houses. But that's a, a best guess, highly dependent on the economy. Um, yeah, so those those are the um, capital improvement plans. Like I said, we request that. Uh, probably as part of the same motion where you approve the budget ordinance or a separate motion that they are following to approve the capital improvement plan. Um, so I just want to answer any questions that you had. Or... Now, I want to thank you guys for putting this together and for the other plan that we're working on because I think this is something important to ensure that the citizens don't have undue surprises. Uh, private business does this kind of thing all the time. And I think this is one area where we, we're, we're doing the right thing. So thank you. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And since this is an entry point, an initial point, uh, uh, not concrete, so to speak, I would make that motion to approve the CIP as presented to us this morning. Do we need a budget? That's coming with the budget you do a budget in two months. Yeah, you can approve it uh, uh, the June 7th. Okay. Joint or separate? Yeah, either, yeah. Way, either way, you can make the uh, part of your motion. I thought, I don't, excuse me. I thought you were asking for it a few minutes yeah, ago. I, I understand. Yeah, we'll do this in, in, in June 7th. Is, uh, we'll have a public hearing on this, and then we will hopefully take up a vote at that time. You're not required to have any hearings or anything on this, but if you want to include that as part of your budget. So we'll have a public hearing, hearing on the budget. Yes, All right, very good. Gentlemen, any questions? Mr. Manager, any new business? Yes. Um, so most of you all have received a phone call this weekend uh, from somebody that lives on the southwestern part of the county in regards to their um, lack of water supply to their homes. I had contact Ronnie, you might want to come up there. Uh, contacted Ronnie and had his staff go out there to talk to the property owners to find out who's not was it ran out of water. We had, I think he found that there were three out there. Um, we asked the lady, the, the individual, if they were interested in, you know, what, what were they seeking us for? And I think they indicated that they weren't interested in public water. Of course, if you did run public water out there, it is very expensive. Um, as, you know, and it's, in my opinion, I think that the, um, that they're all in the same aquifer and, 
there, the water level has dropped over there, and in my opinion, I think that the, the their wells need to be dropped. And I don't know if that's a place where the, the county needs to be in the business, as you mentioned, Commissioner Berg. We're not in the private sector, and that's a, it seems like a private sector thing. But that's just for for discussion. I want to know which direction you all want to give us. Well, when I got the phone call, my, my only concern was just to. Uh, uh, determine the uh, uh, how big of an issue it was. Not to, to you know to kind of wrap your arms around the issue to see if it was one house, three house. During the phone call, I was expecting as many as six. Yeah, and well, she told me as many as a hundred. Which okay. And at that point in time, you know, you just uh, my my interest was mainly just to kind of get your arms around what the issue was. Not that there's a county could provide a solution, but we surely could be responsive if it was a, a, a or not respond, but to help guide, help our, our citizens there if it was a, 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 a relatively large geographical area, help facilitate some type of response, help them get some type of response. But not necessarily is it a, something that we can repair, sir. Well, I, uh, I think I know that would be the. I just want to start by thanking you guys for being so responsive because it is our business to find out if it's our business, yeah. and, and that's what you guys were doing. Uh, I appreciate that uh, the lady was very polite. When she was talking 100, that was a much different story than three. Uh, so, uh, and if she adheres to her statement about uh, they, they're not interested in public water, it's all in their plate. Now, have we already sent a truck out, or rented a truck for just my water? Mm -hmm. No, we've checked, we've checked on if there is. Uh, we can get one through Davis Water Company, which is a, uh, a company. They pull water out of our hydrants. They provide this service in other areas. And we can get a truck out there if, you know, the board would like for us to. No, I spoke to the resident uh, yesterday and uh, she has a well drilling company contracted to come out today and deepen the well, and they think this will take care of the She problem. just left me an email, a voicemail, because I went back there and listened, and she's asking the county what the county's going to do. And my response back to her, unless you guys say otherwise, it's the responsibility of the property owner. Yep. Uh, it's not a county issue. Well, I'd like to be kept informed, but that's about it at this point. Yeah, I, I don't know that, that you know, they're going deep in the wells. I don't know. We have folks. Well, I mean, mine's, my well's about there, too. I'm about to drop my bowl a <laughs> couple hundred feet. So I understand what you're saying. Very good. Any other items? No, sir. All right. That being said, our next meeting is June 7th at 6.30 p.m. Again, as I said, we'll have a public hearing to, to talk about the budget, and hopefully we'll have a motion to take that up and this uh, CIP plan as well. So with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I would just add that if the manager will be in contact with us with any, as a result of these conversations and deliberations, if there's any changes to the document that was provided to okay. us, that you would uh, be in contact with us. Sure. And I'd also add that, uh, also I appreciate this, when we got into the, the uh, some of the, uh, justifications it clarified some of the questions that I had so to be honest but that email that you sent out uh, that can that answered a lot of my questions that I didn't have to circle around circle back with so I just encourage you that if we can maybe get that version next time in a hard copy I want to look at my iPad so much. <laughs> Mr. Berger lives next door to these wells. I would suggest we put him in charge. There you, go. there you go. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll absolutely make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Sure. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you.